Oh, fun. <coughs> Sorry, what? Am I? Oh.
Hello everyone, welcome back. It's been a little while since we've done a Deep Space 15 Cerberus Station episode due to GM just with family and getting kicked in the butt with a virus. But we're back now, and also who's back is Captain Crawford. And in celebration of the fact he's back, Captain Crawford gets the opening log. Yep, give me just one second here. Not I a have... <clears throat> Captain's log, start at 82978.0. If you words again, I've been back on the station for a couple of days and it's been good to be back in the big chair. I've missed my crew and it'll be good to see them again. Captain Mossy has been scouting locations for the Graviton catapult using the USS Lunette and... She seems to have found a couple of prime locations, but we are still looking at a couple other options. Uh, reconstruction of the USS Perseus is also proceeding on schedule. We had several Shobadne on board, and they have asked for asylum on board the station. Well, I would like to... Excuse me. Uh, oh, my... Well, I would like to grant them asylum. I would like to meet with my senior staff first to assess the situation since I wasn't there myself to overlook the proceedings. In other words, uh, it is Christmas Eve here on Cerberus Station, and I have been petitioned to allow public parts of the station to be decorated for the season. Uh, as not one to deny celebration of the holidays, I've allowed that to happen. Uh, the station has been decorated for many races, not races, species, uh, holidays, and I put Commander Dolrum's husband, Apatu, in charge of much of the floral decoration, and I can say that he's done a hell of a job. And to help celebrate the season, I've decided to call my senior staff together in order to celebrate a bit of the holiday myself, and log. All right. So, we are going to start in the new conference lounge, where the where uh, Captain Crawford is has gathered his senior staff for a meeting. Alrighty. As he kind of, you know, strides into the room, he kind of looks over. And trying to remember, I think, out of character, I don't think he's met either Deimos or Keevan at this point, has he? Maybe cursory greetings when you first got on station and took command, but this might be your first official senior staff meeting. Alrighty. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Demos, Lieutenant Commander Kivon, I believe we haven't been formally introduced. No, we have not, sir. Agreed, we have not, sir. Well, as... I'm sure you've at least read in some reports. I am Captain Crawford, and from what I've read so far, you two seem to be quite established officers. I agree with that statement. I've been trying to do what I can over the years. <laughs> now, I'm sure you're wondering why I've called at least most of you here today. Um... I wanted to discuss some of our S. I need to look at that race again. Shobad Ne. Shobad Ne. Okay. Our situation with the Shobad Ne. Now, from what I've been reading, about eighty-nine of them have asked for asylum. And since I wasn't here for when that event occurred, I wanted to get some of you guys' opinions on the matter. Well, from a security standpoint, wouldn't be an issue to keep an eye on them. They could definitely fill up some of the quarters we have. The only thing I'm worried about is culture shock. They've been trapped in that weird pocket for some time now. They're going to be definitely having to adjust to a lot of strange ways. That's mm -hmm. my only concern. Other than that, uh, I don't see any reason why we can't grant them refugee status instead of an asylum. They're not running from any diplomatic powers, as far as I'm aware. Of course. Um, were di was this species warp capable? Unknown. Uh, 
you might have to talk with our Diplomat Corps about that. But they, for the worst part, were strapped, the, strapped in a place that they couldn't maintain. For the worst more. part, were... Let's see. <laughs> it seems like by the history and the stories that they were sharing, that at one time they were an advanced society that was trapped within that null space pocket. Uh, while there, they advanced kind of on their own and in a way had a second coming but as best they could. Um, doesn't seem like they are currently war capable. I see. Well, have we given them basic information about the Federation yet? Commander Area will raise her hand at this. Captain, I've given their leader, he calls himself Steve Prime, um, uh, the information on Federation p practices and policies in as many official languages as possible. Quite frankly, they seem to be very... In they are a very close-knit species, probably because they have had very little in the way of personal space growing up in their planet fortress mega structure thing. They per seem to be perfectly willing to do whatever they're told. It's they've rarely had a. Doesn't seem that they have a backbone. Well, they have a backbone. Actually, two. It's segmented. It's kind of weird. But metaphorically, they don't have a spine. They're spineless. This Steve Prime seems to be the first one to step up to be a leader. I see. Well, I guess in that case, that makes him the lead for any diplomatic talks we have with these show bad nah. Um, on a less official matter, as some of you may know, it is what is known as the Earth holiday of Christmas Eve, and during my time away, I decided to, um, get you some gifts on my way back. And he grabs several different, uh, like assortments of bags and boxes from underneath the conference table and hands them out to each of the crew. Now... Lieutenant Commander Demos, from what I've read, I don't know much about the extra species myself, but your your kind doesn't necessarily have holidays, correct? We have holidays, if not your holidays. I see. So, alternate reality gets a little bit messy. I see. Um. Well, actually, I did end up getting something for Midas that's in the box that I gave you, if you wouldn't mind opening it. You'll open it for Midas? Um, and inside of it is a tiny little, like, uh, it's basically a small, like, com badge. Or basically just, like, a Delta magnet that Midas can wear. <laughs> you put it on, and Midas immediately drops to the floor. Like, oh. Oh. Is, is that a magnet? Not that... <laughs> Do magnets hurt him? No, he's just messing. Come on, Midas, get up. <laughs> he slowly float back up. <laughs> Let's see, and for Commander Dorum, inside a bag, you know, with the stereotypical, like, it's just a bag with paper stuff in it. Uh, it's a very fine bottle of Ryzen wine. Something tells me you want me to share this with a friend of mine. Well, you can share it with whoever you wish, sir. I'm sure Apatu will love it. <laughs> and let's see, and for Lieutenant Commander Keevan, uh, there is a, well, it seems to be something covered in like a cloth, and whatever is inside it appears to be moving. And as you take, <laughs> God, I'm reading the Discord chat. Get away from that. Um, and you, as you take off the uh, cloth, Lieutenant Commander Keevan, inside of it is a Denobulan lemur. My god, I have not seen one of these since probably a several decades. Wow. I remember having one of these as a kid. I'm surprised my parents actually were able to get one to Beta Z. This is excellent. I might have to Play a little bit with. Did you say something after play with 
a bit because you cut out for me after that. <laughs> nope, that was it. Okay. <laughs> On that case, uh, and I'll save the gift for Aria for a time when we actually have them. Mm-hmm. And in that case, um, unless there are any other official matters that you have with me, um, proceed with getting the Shabadness set up in quarters and granting them refugee status and for those of you that celebrate them, uh, have a nice holiday. You're all dismissed. Very well. Does anybody have any scenes they'd like to do before I kick off the plot? Uh, Demos is going to be working on his ship during his off time, if that's something that can happen. Okay. Anybody want to talk with Demos on his ship? Um, I would actually like to bring in, uh, Specialist Nia in on this. Okay, we have Nia and Demos on the shuttle bay. Oh, and is his friend on the ship, too? Um, her, there has been some complications getting her body ready. Uh, so, alas, not this episode, primarily because the GM kind of slipped the mind on that. I'm sorry. But the, her AI personality could exist on a console, if you wish. Oh, no, we're going to follow protocol and leave her on that console in the uh, lab. Alrighty, then. Okay, so, Demos and... Or, let's see, we bring in... The, nope, not the captain, we need <laughs> his other character, Nia. There we go. Imagine Demos in uh, full-on coveralls. <laughs> full-on onesies. <laughs> now, it's quite the interesting outfit you have on, Lieutenant Commander. Yeah, yeah modified it from the old... Uh, what do you call it? The uh, <coughs> pre-Federation uniforms. So that's what it's called. Yeah. Hmm. Changes up, though put more pockets on it and a couple of extra holders for all the tools I'm using. I see. Um, from what I've been hearing about, you're working on building a new class of ship? Well, heavily modifying, ripping, and gutting this one to tweak it and supercharge it, essentially. But if the designs hold true, yeah, maybe Starfleet will have a bunch of little hot rods. I see. Um, would you mind kind of giving me the once-over on what this thing is supposed to do? Scream as fast as it can, like it's a bat out of hell. I see, and you're planning on having it do that how, exactly? Double warp core. At first, I was going to alternate between uh, each and cell having its own core, but the holodeck kept exploding me, so I changed it to have an alternating... Uh, cycle. So one primary warp core for both nacelles, and then the secondary one, smaller design, will feed in power during the drop-down, or the dip in performance of the main core. Much like how the, um, what's it called? Regenerative shields on the Sovereign class operate. I see. Um, I guess he's looking, like, what kind of progress has been made on this? Is it still basically bare bones right now, or how far has he come along in building it? How long has it been since uh, time-wise for our last session? Uh, it's only been a couple weeks, so... I'd say the interior is mostly gutted. Gotcha. So basically, like, the shell of the ship is there, but it, everything still needs to be put inside of it. Yeah. Okay. Gonna be redesigning the few of the decks in there. We're losing two of them just due to the equipment we're shoving in. I see. Their um, inertial dampeners are going to be minimal. He just has a big old... His eyes just get a little bit brighter as he says that. I see. Um, How much crew is this ship supposed to hold? Uh, traditionally, two to ten. After the changes, it could be soloed. But it could still hold up to maybe, maybe ten. Probably not comfortably, I'd assume. Well, there'll still be three decks available. Hmm. Just 
crew quarter wise, I don't plan on having many. I see. Well, if you need help putting some of this stuff together, I'd be more than happy to help you. Yeah, I'd love it. Get more hands on this project. As I have uh, always liked to think about uh, some family, more hands means less work. Oh, certainly. Uh, what kind of parts would he have around? Does he have, like, anything in terms of... Does he have, like, warp cores yet, or... No, he's in the teardown phase right now. Gotcha. Well, and I'll pick up, like, a couple of different tools. I guess we should probably get to work. Yeah. All right. So for the next couple of hours... The station begins the hubbub of pre-Christmas decoration. Somehow a massive artificial tree is erected in the boulevard. Uh, two of the uh, worker bees are stringing lights along the outside of the station. <laughs> uh, and everyone just seems a little bit cheerful, including the red alert klaxon seems to be uh, blaring in time with jingle bells. No, wait, sorry, that's the actual red alert klaxon. Um, there's the automated response of Captain please, Captain Crawford to the bridge, please. Or to the operations center. And I would assume that this would be Lieutenant Darval. Usually, yes. <laughs> Any kind of size? On my way, Lieutenant. <laughs> All right. Mm hmm Uh, Demo is the moment he hears that he's just going to link into the station and make his way on up. He's not changing. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, characters. As as you approach the bridge, uh, Lieutenant Darval is going to call up. Captain, I've detected something very ma massive entering through the gateway. Our gate 24 on the far side. Captain, it appears to be Jin Sewell. Okay. Remind me of the Jin Sewell again. Gigantic spider creatures that were draining right. the sun and captured the Enterprise E crew. That's correct. Okay. Uh, on screen, Lieutenant. <clears throat> it takes... And we will cut back to the main viewer of the Transwarp Gate. Uh, everything is sort of oddly quiet out there as the ship begins to emerge from the Transwarp hub itself. Let's see. And then eventually it does. It gets closer and closer and closer to the station until it comes quite a uh, about halfway between the station and the uh, gateway itself, it comes to a halt. All of a, uh, there does not appear to be any weapons powered. Its shields are raised, however. Hmm. Captain, you seem puzzled. I haven't necessarily encountered these beings before. Uh, Lieutenant Darval, uh, attempt to open hailing frequencies? Aye, Captain. Opening frequencies. They're open. Jinsul's ship, this is Captain Crawford of Deep Space 15. Please state your reason for being here. Uh, you are greeted with the sounds of hissing and shrieking, which at first you think might be um, static or feedback caused from the uh, background radiation of the Carceri Nebula. In fact, it turns out to be actually caused by this individual on screen. Hmm. The Universal Translator will, will pick it up quickly and begin translating. Heretic Station. I am High Illuminator Zatarsh. I have come with a message from the Jinsul 
um, from the gin, from the gym staff, from the Jinzul totalitarian. And he, that message would be, uh, the, a little crown above him, uh, lights up bright blue, and loot. Uh, whoever is manning tactical, which I suspect is going to be, um, Commander Dalrum. Yeah, probably. Uh, your sensors are reading the, uh, two large hatches in the stern of the vessel. The stern of the vessel opening. I'll relay that. Captain, there's movement on this on the ship. Is there any way to tell if these hatches that are opening are weapons, or would it be equivalent to like a shuttle bay door opening? Fairly similar to that of a shuttle bay. Okay. And its reasons become apparent as with a quick uh, burst of a high-powered energy beam, uh, two objects are disgorged from it. And it would help if I was on the right layer to s s put them on. These ones. And it and it spits out the two Hestia-class vessels, the USS Roosevelt and the USS Apophis, um, that were sent by Captain Hamasi to investigate this Jinsul space. They appear to be uh, operating at minimal power, minimal life support, and they're sort of just drifting lazily in space at the, at the moment. Sir, it's the Apophis and the Roosevelt. Uh, send some scans for life signs. We need to know if our people on those ships are alive. Uh, insight science or insight medicine. And the station can assist with sensors medicine or sensor science. Just a difficulty one test here. Keevan, I'm thinking you're going to do that one because I have medicine of one and a science of two. Yeah, I can give that a shot. It was science and what again? Uh, insight science. And what's the station yeah. doing? Uh, insight, uh, if the main character is doing insight science, then the station will assist with insight science, or sensors science. Okay, two successes so far. Good start. And hey, nice. Okay, so yeah, that's three momentum. Three momentum. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, so this, the ships appear to be fully intact. Uh, no sign of damage. Uh, their, their warp cores are offline. Um, life support is operating at minimal capacity. But each ship has a, a full crew complement on board. Uh, and since you said they're operating on minimal power, is there any damage to the ships, or are they fine? Uh, the ships... Um, if you choose to spend one momentum, I will answer all those questions. Oh. I will most certainly spend that momentum. Mm -hmm. uh, the USS Apoth Apophis has uh, uh, suffered some uh, significant scarring along the, up, along the uh, front portion of its saucer. Looks like it took mm -hmm. a massive energy hit. Uh, the USS Roosevelt is missing one of its nacelles. I see. Um, uh, Jin's the, the ah, not paying any heed to what you're looking at. Uh, the Jin Sewell continues to speak. We have been told from one of your captains that this time might be sacred to humans. We understand the nature of of sacred as we have our own holy duties to perform. We ask as a good favor, or as a good favor, we return these to you as part of you, so that they may take part in your holy celebrations and that they may continue to serve you and your empire and whatever machinations. However, this also serves as a warning to you. If any more of your ships are seen interfering with our most holy crusade, to expunge fake light from our from our part of this space, we will not be so kind. A GM. Yes. Can Demos walk on to the ops now? Sure. And as he's walking, he's just making contact with the person on screen, taking his station. Mm-hmm. Let's see if he recognizes anyone. <clears throat> Mm. 
once he or once uh the Jin Sul locks or notices the giant mechanoid form of Demos, it looks at you. We see that the sl we see that the Slayer is still on board your your starbase. Would I be able to tell that he was talking about Demos? I'm assuming. Probably a fairly decent bet. Yes, he has, he and his, he and your kind have are responsible for the deaths of several of our holy warriors. However, death is as much a part of life uh, as one can expect from our holy journey. We bid you no ill will. However, your capabilities and combat prowess are noted, Slayer. And with oh, the, as I, yeah. oh, nope, go ahead, go ahead. Oh. As I've read in some reports, he did use lethal force, but he does express regret in the matter, even if you see death as part of your crusade, as you've said. If he expresses regret, then he is weaker than we had first anticipated. If you are to commit to an action, you must do so with the full embodiment of your soul. There will be no regrets. The Jinsu hold none for the life we extinguish. For they die, they are heretics and must fall. I see. Well, if you have no other business with us... We do not. And with that, he will cut communications, turn his ship, and will begin to depart back into the gate in which he came. Hmm. I've alerted Scott Reiner to start sending ships over to the Roosevelt and Apophis to help with any aid. Of course. Thank you, Lieutenant Commander. Um, please make sure that the captains of both the Roosevelt and the Apophis, if they are able to come talk to me at their earliest convenience. Mathek just bringing them in and docking them in uh, within the docking ring. I'd prefer to do a sweep first, just in case anything was left. We don't need an unexpected explosion happening inside the station. That is true. We can start beaming over the crew here. The transporters should uh, take care of anything left with the crew. That should be fine. Uh, Keevan, I'd like to grab some of the engineering team to send over as well so they can inspect all the systems before bringing the ships into dry dock. I'll have a couple of crews ready to go and sent down to sent down for transport. He just looked at the captain and was like, sorry. I've got a used to handling like this. With your permission, what happens? Captain? I'm sorry? With your permission? Of course, do what you have to do, Lieutenant Commander. He was just going to nod and turn back and then kind of just look down for a moment. I wasn't making stuff up when I said that you had regret. Light, Lieutenant Commander? I don't like killing, but they didn't leave me a choice. But if it came back to that same situation again, and if I had to protect their away team... I'd make the same choices. I don't know if that makes me a good person or not. But my duty is to protect the crew, the people, and everyone who I'm sworn to protect. Of course. I might not necessarily agree with the actions that you took, but I agree with the reasoning behind them. Go take care of the Apophis and the Roosevelt. Aye, sir. Okay, so Demos, is, uh, are you staying on station or are you heading over to the ship? 
Uh, I'll stay on station just to observe everything. Okay. Uh, what about you, Kevin? I'll actually I'll go with the go, head over to the ships. I'll head over to the Roosevelt first. Okay. Uh, Commander Area Report is reporting, uh, receiving the crews from both vessels and giving them a quick once over. Aside from a, uh, it appears that they have been left in a slightly low oxygenated environment, which has caused most of them to suffer uh, unconscious or fall unconscious and, and stay in a form of uh, sort of a deep sleep until they were brought aboard the station. Uh, she's beginning the revival process as nor now. With luck, both captains will be up and running within the next hour or so. And Mr. Keevan, if you're going to be starting to investigate the ships, I'd like you to please roll me um, an insight plus engineering, please. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty of a difficulty of two, and I'm going to spend a couple threats to increase the complication to 18 to 20. Okay. That's a 19. That's... Yep. Cool. 19 and one success. Okay. So aside, uh, it, it appears that the last few hours of the uh, crew's activity was mostly struggling to uh, keep themselves alive against a constant power drain ability. That must have a uh, power draining weapon that appears to have been employed by the uh, by the Jin Sul's, uh, for lack of a better term, super carrier. <clears throat> um, the you are able to at least understand the nature of the draining weapon, but you aren't able to come up with a decent defense at this time. And that is a complication. And I know precisely what that complication is going to be. Um, aside from that, their, sh their systems are more or less functional. Um, aside from the one missing nacelle and a little bit of patchwork, both ships could hypothetically be turned around and spun right back up and sent off to explore more. Okay, definitely going to have to work on that defensive weapon, <laughs> the, the, that draining weapon. Mm -hmm. I will go ahead and I will actually um, give a brief report to the captain and let him know what we're looking at and then look into the, start looking into how to get this nacelle. Well, uh, the, uh, aside from having two internal dry dock facilities, the Deep Space 15 does come with uh, several industrial-sized replicators. It'll take some doing, but you should be able to get a nacelle up and running within a couple weeks. <laughs> okay, yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to definitely... Um, I think I'll have some of those worker bees that were already out there um, detach from their abilities and go ahead and come back to pull the Roosevelt towards... All right. <clears throat> and that'll take that. So, um, does anybody have anything else they'd like to do this Christmas Eve, or shall we cut to Christmas Day? Hmm. Family Christmas... Uh, Dilram will uh, go off duty and do a family Christmas with the entire family. Okay. Uh, now, is Nia part of the family now, since he's been dating your daughter now for three months? Yeah, he's invited. Oh, I love it. <laughs> uh, uh, Captain Crawford, are you doing it? What are you up to this evening? Um, well, he doesn't necessarily have much family on board the station, if any. Um... If Dorum wouldn't feel intruded upon, Captain Crawford would like to join them. I was going to say, if Crawford goes back into his uh, ready room, he has a paper invitation sitting on his desk. 
Oh, well, okay then. Then Captain Crawford will also join them. Okay. Um, would you like to do that as a scene? Because that sounds like a fun scene. Sure. Yeah. That would cool. sound lovely. All right. And any of the other senior yeah. staff are also welcome to join if they do not have families on the station. Fantastic idea. Uh, where are the family quarters here? LQ. There we are. All right. There is a background Rysian uh, orchestral suite playing as the captain and Dolrum have entered. Uh, Apatu, still wearing his Christmassy apron with a Rudolph nose that is in a slightly embarrassing location. But oh so perfect. Yes. <laughs> is just about to put the... Uh, uh, main course on the t or uh, not the main course it's Christmas dinner we always start with the um, appetizers first does anybody else wish to join in for Christmas dinner even no I'm good All I'm right. gonna I'm Keevan's gonna Keevan's gonna be up to a little monkey business <laughs> fun <laughs> <sighs> Demos would you Demos? join us no, Demas is going to be in security. Fair enough. <laughs> okay. Dolrum, it's your house. Thus, it's your party. Uh, so we walk through the door. Honey, we're home. Well, just in time. I was just about to bring out the Hasbrot salad. Sounds delicious. I'm assuming everything was grown here. He just gives you a quick look as if, why would you think anything else? <laughs> uh, I'm going to uh, go into my quarters and change out of uniform and into casual attire. And turn to the captain. Captain, you're welcome to sit wherever. Of, of course. And he's changed out of his uniform too. He probably looks slightly overdressed for the occasion. He's probably like in his uh probably his diplomatic uniform. And he'll just kind of pull up a random chair and just sit down. I'll come back wearing a Christmas sweater. <laughs> awesome. Please tell me it's an ugly Christmas sweater. Maybe. Beautiful. Maybe. Yes. <laughs> there is a quick chime at the door, and without waiting for someone to enter or answer in comes Special Nia, who is carrying a bouquet of flowers and this awkward grin on his face. Just as I planned. Um, <laughs> um, I'm sorry I'm late. I, um, I, I was looking for flowers and I, um, oh, uh. She walks over, gives you a quick kiss on the cheek and will take the flowers and say, thank you. They're very beautiful. Now, don't embarrass yourself in front of the captain. She'll give you a nudge and move on. As she finds oh, the... a vase. Oh, he's here too, uh, Captain. Hello. A specialist, please. Have a seat. Yes, talking to yourself. Yes. <laughs> Yay, talking to yourself. That's great. And, and feeling, like, pressured because there's the two leading officers of the station. He'll kind of just awkwardly pull out the chair by the captain and just sit down. <laughs> I imagine I'm helping a Patu uh, bring things over to serve. Oh yes, there's um, several bottles of wine are being brought out, and a Patu says, "Should we give him the? Should we? Should we give him a good bottle? After all, he can give it to you." Well, I think any good special occasion deserves a good bottle of wine. Agreed. And you'll just re. He'll reach in and pull out the bottle as if he already knew you were going to say yes. Captain, why don't we break open this bottle that you brought? It seems like an appropriate occasion. Of course, please. It's what I got it for. And I pop the cork and start uh, dishing out glasses. 
And as soon as you pop the cork, uh, there is a brief fluttering of the station lights as it switches from regular from the regular fusion reactors to the backup system for just a split second before flickering back to the regular reactor. Just ever so briefly, the captain will kind of tap his comm badge. Lieutenant Commander, what just happened? I'm uh, talking to Keevan. Naturally. My apologies, Captain. Um, just trying to work with something to get the Roosevelt's nacelle recommissioned faster, and I'm actually down here in the manufacturing bay to try to tweak something a little bit. Roll me reason engineering, please. Difficulty of two. And if you have power systems, that would be a great focus. Unfortunately, I do not. Hmm. <coughs> okay. All good. Uh, yep. Yeah. As far as you're aware, this is a perfectly understandable phenomenon given what you were just working on. Please, nothing to worry about. Please continue. There's nothing going on, Captain. Every, just a minor power fluctuation, but I am trying to keep everything going together and just trying to expedite things a little bit. Sorry to interrupt. Sorry to possibly interrupt your... You're fine. Um, Just, just as a backup plan run a uh, uh let's say a level run a just a level one diagnostic for now and if you see something necessary please run higher levels hi right, captain i will do that And somewhere, some poor ensign who is looking forward to spending Christmas with a short easy shift is now running a level one diagnostic. Warp. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. Uh, Dorum will look at uh, Patu and go, you know, we don't need all the big lights on anyway. And I'll dim the lights and get some candles out and have like a nice Christmas dinner. Apatu seems quite happy with that, as does uh, Vayan, who's gets a little, uh, whose one of her hands gets a little cl closer to uh, Naya than he would find comfortable in the current situation. No, oh my. Oh, out out of character, I used the wrong level because Shizno just messaged me. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I I meant to say a level four diagnostic. <laughs> I was wondering about that myself, but hey. Yeah. <laughs> so so retcon that to a level four. I'm not making some poor sucker take apart that system on Christmas Eve. Fair enough. <laughs> oh, why not? Ensign Holmquest deserves it. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> and there's our chief engineer on beta shift. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so meanwhile, while all this is going on, uh, we are going to quickly cut to the security office. Where Mr. Demos is doing what precisely? Uh, he's just going over uh, reports with the um, crew that he has on hand right now. He's um, given anyone that wants to have time off, time off, or he has given them half ship. Uh, he's picking up the slack and doing most of the work himself, but he does want to chat with Dura. Okay. We'll bring in Dura. Man, I get to use a lot of supporting characters tonight. <laughs> Yeah, if someone wants to play Dora, go right ahead. Hmm. Lieutenant Commander, you wanted to speak to me? Yes. I've been reading your report and your service record, and I just want to ask you flat out. It's a nice day and everything, because I sort of want to spoil the mood, but what is your goal for security? What is your goal in this whole career of Starfleet you have? Um, I haven't necessarily put a lot of thought to it, considering that I'm only a crewman, sir, but if I had to give you a goal flat out, be to do something similar to what you're doing now, but 
on a ship rather than on a station. Respectfully, sir. I see. The difference between a station and a ship is mild. It's a giant chasm. As you saw with Chief Ember. Formally. Yes. She gave you an order. Can you repeat that order to me, please? I believe it was in regards to your former medical officer. Yes, if Emery is serving me correctly, it was to shoot him if he tried to come close. I didn't necessarily think much of it at the time, but when you have someone that's as forceful with their personalities, the former Master Chief was, um, it scares you. I have and a name. I have the a name. name of... Oh, sorry. I'm going to stop you there. I have the names of all the personnel on this station that had direct contact with Chief Ember and her training regiment, including you. In your honest opinion, are you broken? Am I going to waste my time trying to help you? Am I going to waste my time trying to help these people? Um, I can't necessarily speak for the other security officers, sir, but due to some of the sessions that ha I've had with Lieutenant Dak Lorza in the counseling department, um, I can speak for myself when I say that I'm not broken, but some of the others might. I haven't spoken with them much since the incident, but if you're wanting to train someone and push them hard, I think you can count on me, sir. Right now, you're in a trench. You're eight feet down, and you're getting deeper. I don't know if I can trust you to be in charge when I'm away. That's why I have Reiner here now. But I want to help you get out of that. I want to build a ladder and help you climb out of that trench. Your first task is to assess and evaluate all of these names on the list. Get them checked out with psych, and if they cannot change their ways from the habits they've been taught, transfer them out. You will be handling that. Um, with all due respect, Lieutenant Commander, I'm just a crewman. I'm nothing on this station. Why would I have the authority to transfer these people just under your orders, or... He's going to hand her a pad. He's like, exactly. You want to be more? Well, you're going to start working yourself towards a commission. This is the track for this. This is the program that I've set up and talked with Starfleet about. I see, and she'll start scrolling through the data pad. Um, I'll do my best to get started on this immediately, sir. Um, You mind if I take one of the offices that might be here in order to start my work? Certainly. Uh, if you don't mind, Lieutenant Commander, I'll excuse myself to do so. Before you go, yes. don't look at them just as names on a data pad. Don't look at them as just, you know, crewmen, whatever. Get to know them. Find out exactly if they can be helped. Of course. <laughs> there is a shrill alarm uh, triggered by something. Um, it, Demos, you recognize it immediately as a breach in the secure armory. Uh, it, the shrill alarm is immediately sounded by, er, followed by the muffled sound of uh, blaster rifle fire. Dora will immediately draw her phaser. Uh, Demos is going to get up, he's going to link into the station, and he is going to initiate red alert. Alright. Like, all security personnel to the armory locker. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Demos to Captain. This is Crawford, go ahead. Why is there a red alert? We got an early surprise for a Christmas gift. We're heading to the armory right now. Possible breach. Of course, um... I assume you're already routing all security personnel there. Would Just when I thought we were going to have a peaceful holiday, and he'll cut off the communication after that. 
Rami, can you hear me? I am operational. Hello, Commander Demos. Initiate Tartarus program around the armory. Lock down all subsections and... What are they called? Jeffrey Tudes. Acknowledged. Once there is a buffer between us and at least a few of the doors, vent Atmo. Understood. Atmosphere has been... Uh, has been siphoned off. Of course, he's he's assuming that Romney knows not to do that if there is someone in one of those lockdown points. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Why is there a dead Santa Claus in his hallway? <laughs> Oh, you've killed Christmas. Congratulations. <laughs> Santa I was really... real, but now he's dead. The title goes from the Slayer to the Santa Slayer. <laughs> no. Oh, dear. Yeah, he'll uh, head on down there with his full uh, contingent. Okay. We're going to head to the armory. And that call also went to all civilian security as well. Fair enough. Okay. <clears throat> the armory is one deck uh, is located one deck below that of the security office. There is a direct turbo lift that goes from the security office down to the armory, as well as a more circuitous route. <clears throat> um, you have made it through. Uh, Rami has Rami confirms that there are no life signs present, and no, she didn't kill anyone. <laughs> And you have reached the armory door. Robbie, you say it's all clear inside? I'm detecting no life signs, nor am I detecting any more power readings. All right, Reiner, other side. Dura, you take down center here. The moment the door is open, you breach in, check your corners, and check your sides. Of course. Fatty, Kyle, and Tim, you follow behind. We'll follow after all of you. And he's going to get on one side of the doors, and he's going to have wait for Reiner to get on the other side, and then once they're in position, he's going to pop the doors open. All right. Positions are set. He gives a little head nod and gets the panel on the door to open up the doors. The doors open up, and there is a rush of uh, air as everything re-equalizes. Uh, the lights are on. There's a little bit of smoke that is wafting uh, from the underside of the still sealed uh, inner armory door. But aside from that, there is nothing uh, present. Just realize the stream isn't seeing anything. Alright. Rainer, Dura, I want you to do an inventory check on all of our possessions. Make sure the armaments are secure. Anything that is considered highly explosive. Make sure it's locked down in a secure location. Preferably security itself now. This place has been compromised. Of course, Lieutenant Commander. Mm -hmm. Ensign, you heard him. All right. Uh, Dura, uh, you're the first person to see this. Uh, it's very clear where the breach came from. It was the sec uh, secure weapons locker Delta, uh, where which has been up till now keeping the keeping confiscated non-Federation weaponry, uh, such as the uh, weapons seized from Michael Jensen, a uh, mm -hmm. couple Klingon and Romulan weapons that were found in suspicious places, and the captured Jinsul weaponry. I see. Uh, it, sh uh, it should be noted that gonna... the uh, door has been, has been blown outwards, and mm -hmm. that's the only sign of damage. Uh, going to the locker and looking it over, mm -hmm. if anything is missing, what is? Uh, this is going to be a uh, reason security, please. Difficulty of two. Okay. And one other person can assist. Reason security is pretty good for her. Um, This might be a tad bit of... Uh, energy weapons as a focus? Energy weapons would work, sure. Okay can assist with it because I have explosive and investigation. Those would be perfect focuses. Whew, that is three successes already. Alright. So that is one momentum. 
And a and... second momentum. Team host the Slayers. <laughs> nice. Uh, uh, so, uh, judging from the particle blast, the weapon that fired was one of the uh, Jin, uh, Jin Sul rifles that was a, that was uh, kept during the assault and former investiga- or the investigation thereafter. It appears to have gone off, which is very weird because it did not have a power cell. In fact, how it actually fired in the first place was a mystery that the Lieutenant Kievan never really solved. Hmm. Rami? Yes, Lieutenant Commander. Can you see if there's any radiation that came off that ship when it was by the station? It's very difficult to for our sensors to detect specific radiation patterns in this nebula. However, I shall begin a thorough analysis. I also scan within the station too. Understood. Oh. All right, everyone. Sorry for the uh, Christmas surprise. But let's make sure everything's secure here. Anything volatile, we'll move up to security for now until we can reinforce and reevaluate what happened here. Of course. Yeah, Demos to. Oh, sorry. Just following his orders, she will take anything that would be like what he described and have it prepared to be taken to main security. Fair enough. Demos to Captain Crawford. This is the captain. Go ahead. Uh, found out just cause of the issue. The uh, Jun Sul weapon that I brought back as a, um, no, not, not as a trophy, but more for examination, uh, seemed to have triggered and fired. Huh. Yeah, I'm operating under the idea that maybe there is an outside factor that triggered it. But I'm also going to go under the assumption that we may have a Jin Sul on board. Um, those are both safe options, Lieutenant Commander. Um, Lieutenant Darval, please start any. Wait, we probably would not have any information on what a Jin Sul life sign is like, would we? Or would we? Well, we. You have been up close and personal with several of them. That's uh, true. While Commander Ariel has not had the displeasure of dissecting one but there are right. numerous tri- tricorder readings of them um lieutenant overall coordinate with anybody else on the ship including commander aria to start immediate scans of the station for any Jinsul life signs acknowledged captain <laughs> rami yes demos once Dura gives the all clear that her task has been completed, please lift Project Totter. Understood. Well, I'll be in my office. Yeah. And he'll just go up to his office. Alright. So despite a minor piece of uh, entertainment, um, the captain can once again go back to his lovely dinner with uh, the family. Okay. I'm apologize for the couple of disturbances. Um hopefully nothing else will happen. Captain, we've been involved in Starfleet for a long time. We're used to having to stop and start <laughs> things over again. Of course, and <laughs> Apatu, I assume the Wine would be up to your standards. Captain, any gift is graciously appreciated, and I must admit that the vintage is quite is quite lovely. This was the, this was anything from before the Borg ravaged Ryza during the invasion is a good vintage. <laughs> it took a while to find it, but I figured I should bring back the best. Indeed, yes. Ever since they rebuilt Ryza. The vines just haven't been the same. <laughs> and he'll offer a quick toast. And then he'll down the whole glass just because he can. 
<laughs> I'll just turn. Take it there, easy there, dear. You want to last the whole night. He nods, slightly coy. Of course, I should know not to rush these things. I mean, I don't mind if we rush things. I just smile. Okay. If there's nothing else for the night, then we shall go to Christmas morning. I just uh, am assuming that we'll just have finished family dinner and sit around, enjoy stories, probably watch a Christmas story on the television because, (laughs) yes. (laughs) Of course. Depending on which version of the Christmas story you think is, you know, we could have the Disney version. That would immediately get us copyright uh, struck. (laughs) Um, well, I'm thinking Ralphie with the leg lamp. Ah, yes. <laughs> that one. Good. Oh, that that Christmas story. I'm sorry. I was thinking of the... Uh, Christmas, Christmas Carol? Da- yeah, the Christmas Carol. Right. Specifically nope. the Muppets Christmas Carol? The best one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that's how, the, that, that's how the Civil War began, Your Honor. <laughs> uh, but that also will get struck down by Disney. Also, yes. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Christmas morning arrives and finds everyone bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Uh, Mr. Keevan, uh, as you begin your shift, you are assailed with a pad from the night before with several small glitches that have been plaguing the station that your night shift engineers have yet to nail down properly uh, items including uh, the loss of artificial gravity on the pool but in parentheses it said not to worry the aquatic evacuation system worked perfectly so there was no drownings uh, reactor core 4 went into meltdown warning and then immediately stabilized uh, the transporter deck or the transporters on deck 38 and 39 somehow changed their coordinates uh, so anyone trying to beam to 30 to 39 ended up on 38 instead and the turbo lifts uh, the, or the main shaft turbo lifts for a period of five minutes between 0100 hours and 0105 just decided that they would go to whatever floor they wanted to instead of whatever floor their passengers wanted to Does this beta shift know anything about doing engineering work? I'm gonna have to do some retraining. As he he mutters this after as he's looking over the. Hmm. At this point, he's also going to get a hit his com badge and say. It's in home quest. I'm going to need you to run a level two diagnostic over the main EPS system. You hear a bit of a sigh from the other side going, yes, sir. I shall get on it immediately. Uh, I want to say one thing. Mm-hmm. Demos is not bright eye in jail. He's been up this whole time. Oh, yes. He is tired. Um, Demos, your station uh, reports from Rami uh, were analyzed overnight. Uh, there was, as expected with the Jinsul spaceship or supercarrier itself, that was brimming with chroniton energy. Um, that much is known about the Jinsul is that they seem to operate with it somehow. There was even a couple traces found on the uh, the Roosevelt and the Apophis. Uh, there's no sign of Jinsu life signs, however. Okay. Is the weapon still there, or is it gone? Like did it get destroyed and discharged? Uh, it w- it was still there. Um, it is more than w- you are more than welcome to analyze it if you'd like. I'm not going to analyze it. I'm not an egghead. We're going to get some of the um, blue shirts down here. All right. Some of the smart guys down here to examine this technology is within security and under guard. Just in case. Okay. Who would like to go and study a weapon? 
Um, even though it's Christmas Day, I think Nia would probably want to get in on this. Okay. So we have Nia. Does anyone wish to bring a supporting science character along? The only one I have is uh, Deckard. Deckard. Where is he? He's in these science SCs. Oh, there he... Ah, yes. Jonathan Deckard. Ooh, he's an old guy. Cool. Okay. Back into security. I will take Ela. All right. Okay, we'll just move those over here for the moment. Okay, so we have Mr. Decker, we have Lakila, we have Naya, I assume we have Demos. Yep. Well, he's going to be in his room, he's just, he's tired. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, where's, oh, there's Ela. And is anyone else going to get in on this? Uh, is Nia's token on the board? I thought, th there he is. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. okay, Mr. Deckard. Okay. So the three of you, while under security guard in a force-fielded room, just in case, ha have before you a, a fairly large rif uh, energy rifle. It's been known to shoot chroniton particles at a fairly um, explosive rate. But there is no sign of an energy discharge me mechanism or a or a power source. Usually I'd say I have an idea, but looking this thing over, I mean, if we don't know how this thing fires, how are we supposed to know... Deckard's just reading over a pad. <laughs> it, it, it could be like... Uh, hmm, no, maybe? Impossible. Now, if I For... recall right, Lakila has expertise in chroniton stuff, doesn't he? Yes. Uh, he he has, has chronological like... anatomies. Anatomy. Yeah. An anomal T's. <laughs> that is close enough. So if Lakila, um, you could roll me... Uh, reason science or reason security and this would be a difficulty of three and one of the other folks can assist okay. I'm going to since Ela is being activated I'm going to give him cautious science all right and he is confused he won't be assisting on this. I will buy a third die with a momentum. Okay. Okie doke. And I'm assuming that the chronological anomalies works as a focus? This would work in this, yes. That is four successes already. Wow. Nice. In a 19. I'm going to reroll that zero, because... Oh, you have... That, that works. A decadalist. He doesn't have a focus, but he has an idea. All right. Hey. Okay, so that so, is so... six successes total, so I believe that maxes you out. Uh, nope, that brings Huzzah. you to five momentum. My apologies. Uh, so, uh, Lakila, you, rec you have to uh, double-check your findings, um, and thanks to the gigantic library that exists within Deep Space 15, it's confirmed almost immediately the what what uh, the piece of, there's a piece of technology in the rifle itself that is a, a phase inverter and those of you who rec remember what phase inverters can do is that they are <clears throat> uh nah. Uh, what they do is uh, transforms normal or normal matter, or, or uh, ah, it transforms normal matter, and so it will pass through other matter as energy, pretty much. But it also does the reverse; it will take energy and transform it into matter. 
and it appears to be particularly affected by chroniton particles. I just raise an eyebrow as I'm looking through the results. I might have found something. And Neil will just kind of come over and look over Ilya's shoulder onto the data pad. I... Right there is a phase inverter. Hmm. So, if I remember how these things work correctly. Do you think somewhere there was a spike in chroniton particles that might have caused this thing to fire? Or... I mean, judging by all the readings that we've had, every encounter um, with these people is brought by chronotons. I see. So the likelihood is, is it itself right now, if I were to scan for chronotons, is probably surrounded. Mm hmm. The Ooh. question. The real question here is, though, like, how did it penetrate through the station, causing it to fire? But, Lieutenant, did you have any theories yourself? No, yeah, simply that the weapon is like a sponge. Pulls into Kronaton, builds up a charge, and then discharges. It is simply an ingenious design. Why worry about losing power source on your weapon when your whole vessel is supplied with energy you need? You have yeah, a point. It, it acts as a magnet. The proximity of the other ships could be causing this to be fueled. I suggest putting it in a dampening field for now. Unless. No. That might be impossible. Yes, yeah, so a field should work. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you were there, Deckard. Hmm? I'm sorry. I was thinking of the Borg. Always not a yeah. bad idea to think about. <laughs> that is one thing. It'd be nice to be able to access some of the Borg memories just to see if they've ever encountered these beings or weapons like these to be able to combat. Well, if I was more fortunate, we might have that option, but unfortunately, Starfleet has advised against my plan. What is the said plan? Oh, to be assimilated. Oh, yeah, um, let's, let's not do that. That's, yeah, that's, that's going to be a real solid no from me, and... Also, oh, it's rather impossible now that the Borg are pretty much gone. Then that's why Deckard's sad. <laughs> <laughs> Still, memory files from the Borg be interesting if we could get into them to um, access information on this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, in fairness... There are some people who serve in Starfleet that used to be part of the Borg Collective. Is there any way that they would remember that from their time in a hive mind, if at all? Mm, potentially, but they would be limited to the information that was on them during their time of retrieval from the Collective. When Realistically, they board. the first options that come to mind are the Voyager 7 of 9 and uh, well, the now retired Admiral Picard, but who knows if they even remembered their time with the board, period. Well, I can attempt to look at the Trans Warp Hub see if it has any connections, but as much of a threat of the Borg were, it is sad to see them gone. They had such vast knowledge of accumulate, and now it's just spread across in different cluster. Well, that can be a 
in the future we can look into that right now we should look at putting up a dampening field specifically against chronoton so this thing can't gather a charge all right uh you would know that um Lakila, um an anion field would be the preferred method I will start programming. In Anion Field, we can uh, put up as the dampening field around the weapon. It should prevent any chronoton particles from gathering near it or coming towards it, um, basically blocking the mag of this weapon from the chronotons. Right on. Well, while all the eggheads are down below, we're going to cut back to ops. Lieutenant Derval, once again. Uh, this is going to be a scene change, so we're going to lose one momentum. Alrighty. <clears throat> Captain, Craw Captain Crawford, I am picking up a, ves a vessel on approach through the eye of the Carceri Nebula. Uh, anything that's recognizable, Lieutenant? Yes, sir. Uh, he pauses as his computer beeps back the recognition signal. Pause. Checks again. Captain, this ship is the Void Oblivion. Out of character, what the hell is that thing? The Void Oblivion was the ship that uh, is operated by the Draven. Or, sorry, it's the Void Nightmare. Not the Void oh, Oblivion. gotcha. That's the that. Draven ship that was the start of everything. Hmm. Why in the hell would they be here? So a quick aside, uh, because a lot of this just happened in a text prologue, that the Void Nightmare uh, roughly uh, three weeks ago uh, ambushed the USS Nighthawk and tried to, well, they forcibly boarded it, attempted to steal technology, but were eventually repelled. Uh, they were brought... Uh, their ship's primary weapon was literally destroyed once the crew of the Nighthawk crashed a shuttle into it. And the uh, crew was brought back to Cerberus Station to get a real tongue lashing from the uh, captain. They were basically told to behave themselves or get out of my space. I see. Captain it seems the Nighthawk learned to tactic the Dark Oreo. <laughs> <laughs> Captain, we're um, being hailed. On screen, Lieutenant. Oh, did we lose McCall? Oh, yes, yes, we did. <laughs> so all that's happening, I guess Demos would wake back up as he's been told, is a ship coming? He's like, oh, crap. Make his way back up to the ops. Hello, hello? Hey, hey there you are. I'm sorry, I am... My headset's been cutting out and... Hopefully, it will just keep coming back. My apologies. So, um, on screen is one Balthier Void Runner, who uh, appears in your records as the captain of this ship. And while not directly, while you guys did not directly come meet him in your previous confrontation over the uh, Vitar's planet, uh, the ship was. Or your records definitely indicate that he is the captain. Uh, he is appears rather calm, kind of smiling, which is kind of disconcerting for a being with pitch black skin and blood red eyes. And his long uh, trench coat goes all the way down to the ground. Quick question. Yes. Is this the ship that Galen was on? Yes. Yes, it is. So would we not have... Uh, did Galen ever see this guy? I know he saw someone. Uh, you did not see him. You saw his doctor uh, friend, this individual. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
And I guess, like, my question would be, is Balthier, like, his rank, or is that, like, his actual first name? That's his name. Gotcha. Uh, he stands in, in the center of his bridge, uh, confident, and his uh, smile gets even wider and exposing a series of large white teeth. Ah, Deep Space 15, it is good to see you again. I... Crawford has not met this guy, if memory serves. Uh, no, you you did chase his ship, but you haven't met him personally. Um, I'm assuming you're the captain of this vessel. I can't say I've had the pleasure of meeting you myself, but I have met your ship. Mm. Mm. He quickly... You are not the uh, feline folk that I had spoken with earlier who basically told me to behave or get lost. Is what is everything okay with her? Ah, uh, she's fine. Ah, splendid. In which case, Captain, uh, perm permission to dock and come aboard. Um, going over initial scans, does the Void Nightmare have any weapons charged or anything of the sort? Uh, this would be an Insight Science or Insight Engineering. Difficulty okay. of two. And the ship can or the station can assist with sensors plus science. Um, I would definitely be having either Keevan or Ilya do that role, because Crawford's in, well, engineering is not good. <laughs> I can pick that up. All right. All right. Cool. Well, the station has a success for you. And I believe those are the two successes we need. All right. Yeah, that's two successes. Excellent. Uh, so there are a grand total. Uh, uh, there, there are no weapons charged. Their primary okay. railgun is still missing. And there are 16 Draven life signs and 40 uh, Vitars life signs. Hmm. You are... I assume this is for diplomatic relations. Uh, captain, if that's the right word to use... I suppose, considering that all I have left is a ship under my command, Captain is a perf is a perfect rank. Uh, Captain, I am actually for the first time in my long and illustrious career attempting to run a mission of mercy and find out that I'm not very good at it. I see. And... I'm assuming that, and pardon if I'm using incorrect language, but you're wanting to learn how to better do that, I'm assuming? In a manner of speaking, yes. I see. Then I certainly don't see why we shouldn't let you on board. <clears throat> Splendid, Captain. Splendid. My, if you could please open those very large bay doors, we can find our way in. No need for the tractor beam this time, and he gives a playful wink to Commander Dalrum, who remembers the last time the ship was brought in and required a tractor beam in order to prevent them from running away. I'll just smile as kind of to the side of the screen. Very well, Captain. And as whenever the Void Nightmare starts to dock, I'll mm -hmm. just send, just in case they're somehow listening in, just healthy paranoia, mm -hmm. he'll send a uh, text to Lieutenant Commander Demos's console just to have, uh, just have security on standby 
just in case. Demos is going to read it, stand up slowly, making a dad groan, like, yep, I'm on it. <laughs> He's going to go down himself. Excellent. And Crawford will be down there at the bay to greet the captain, as it were. I'll stay at on ops and control everything from there. Oh, I'm back. Cool. Uh, I think we are going to take a quick break here while the GM sorts out his headset issues. Uh, okay. So let's come back at... Uh, uh, let's make it an even 15 just in case I need more time. So we will resume in 15 minutes or uh, 40 past the hour. All Sounds right. Good. Sounds, Sounds good. good. Let's move to here.
Okay, and we are back. Okay, so uh, Captain Crawford and Lieutenant Commander Demos are heading down. Is anyone else going to meet um, Balthier Void Runner? With my laundry list of engineering issues, I got things to do. Yeah, um, it's actually get they're starting to actually get slightly worse, and we'll start dealing with your try to figure this out shortly. Um, I'm breaking the ship. Quite probable. Uh, where are we here? This one. I just got this station back, Kevin. Don't break it. No okay. promises. Um. <laughs> Uh, just as the captain and Demos head down to the turbo lift, uh, there's a small, a slight jitter in the turbo lift. Uh, they seem to believe everything is okay. All of a sudden, every Starfleet badge from deck one all the way down to deck two hundred uh, starts playing Christmas or starts playing Jingle Bells for roughly five seconds, just before it gets to Jingle all that, and then it <laughs> stops. Um, <clears throat> anyways, uh, you guys walk through the boulevard and make your way to the docking bay, or to the docking entrances, um, where Balthier Void Runner and his uh, sister Zilia are beginning their uh, security clearance as, you know, one of those many security precautions. They're also flanked by two uh, ah, two adult Vitars that Crawford recognizes, f while not in person, they were definitely detailed in his af or Commander Dolrum's after-action report of Samalas and Berg, the officials on board the uh, Vitars planet of Krillia. That was... The uh, that was the planet that was that had been that had thought they were giving their um, population up to the Vitars Navy, where in all of actual fact they were giving it to these guys, unwillingly and unwittingly. See, uh, seeing uh, you guys walk by, walk up. Uh, Balthier takes two steps forward and extends his hand in what he has learned to be the traditional um, Starfleet greeting. Captain, a pleasure to a pleasure to finally meet you in person. And mine as well, Captain. He, he sort of and smirks at that. I'm. A, Would uh, I know his sister's name or? Um, the, uh, given the after-action report of the Nighthawk, I don't think you've had any time to read it. So okay, probably Fair not. Enough. Demos would have, but. Just because that's what Demos does. Uh, she's sort of um, uh, where ah sorry, where Balthier is dressed in a sort of a roguish style of uh, dress, befitting that of his station. Uh, his sister uh, Zilla is dressed m more for let's say a recreational aerobics than anything else. Uh, she's wearing a fairly long uh, lab coat and uh, something more akin to spandex garments underneath, and let's leave it to that. Hmm. And sh there's a bit of a manic um, expression in her eyes as she glances all around the station with sort of a Harley Quinn-style attitude. Is going to step up next to the captain, look at them both. Hello, Demos. It is good to see you again. You're not going to clap me in irons again this time, are you? Yeah, as long as you behave. Oh, behaving, that is actually why I'm here. Uh, he gestures behind him to the uh, two Vitars. Captain, might I introduce you to Samalis and Berg? They are the administrators of the planet Krillia and their main city. I believe that you're, they are familiar with your Starfleet personnel? Indeed they are. Berg, Samalis, it's good to see you again. Uh, Samalis uh, 
while well, obviously giving a Void Runner a bit of a wide berth, steps around and clasps your hand in both of hers, and she smiles. Whereas Berg, being the big guy he is, just sort of crosses his arms and just nods sullenly. And without warning, um, you, um, Balthier just gives a quick, uh, just gives a quick, uh, shout, and, uh, there are now 38 children that are rushing from the hold into the boulevard. Uh, Vitar's children. All... Oh. <clears throat> um... Demos, your uh, security personnel were not really expecting this particular outcome and are distracted trying to maintain a hold of them. Thankfully, most of the children are corralled and behave, told to behave fairly, qu fairly quickly and with minimal fuss. Uh, their clothing is functional, if somewhat uh, uh, soiled. Uh, they haven't changed in about three or four days by your rough estimate. <laughs> My apologies, Captain. This is what happens when I attempt to do a mission of mercy without proper Starfleet training, I suppose. No, it's no need for apologies. Um, And you said there are how many Vitars life signs on the ship? There were 40 of them. Might I ask, kind of like just glancing between Berg and Somalis. How did so many Vitar's children get on the ship, if I may ask? Well, Captain... Uh, she looks a bit sheepish at the... as she recounts the tale. You remember when we first met you and we thought we were giving our crew, our, our populace over to the Vitar's for military service? Of course. Well, we were obviously lied to, and we're, well, let's just say it, it is what it is, and I suspect, thanks to your part, we were reunited with the current Vitars Imperium. Hmm. And, well, Captain, they wanted to take all of our children away. was a bit of a surprise. We're not sure why they showed such interest in our children. Or for sev several of us, actually, I must say. Most of the adults went quite happily wherever they went. Once they saw proper Vitars. But hmm. something was wrong. And the children that were taken were never seen again. Well, we had to do something to protect our offspring. So we did, we contacted the only people we knew who had the ability to get us out from under Vitars, from under our own navy, and we contacted him. And Balthier seems oddly pleased at this. He nods and coyly smiles. Yes, Captain. And being a now upstanding citizen that I am in this part of the space, especially with you looking over my shoulder, I answered their distress signal, and I rescued them, and then I had no idea what to do with them. And so I brought them here. I figured that they would be safe under your auspice. Uh, your space station is far more superior to that of anything I could offer. And here, um, my sister would not be tempted to run, how should we say, experiments. She goes, 38 perfectly good Vitars, say, life, or 38 Vitars youth would have been such an interesting control group. Imagine what we could have done with our cloning facilities if they were still there. Ooh, what's with all the twinkly lights? Um... We're actually, we decided to decorate the station for a bit of an, it's more of an Earth holiday than anything else, um, a holiday called Christmas. 
Her, she, she bobs up and down with excitement. Ooh! Sounds excellent and festive. Balthier doesn't let me run any experiments with voltages over 500 volts anymore. And without even asking permission, she sort of departs the group and begins strolling up and down the boulevard with two security guards really close behind. Balthier just sort of shakes his head and smiles. She doesn't get out much. She certainly seems interesting, for lack of a better word. Mm. A brilliant mind, if somewhat untamed. Still, she is family. What can you do? They say you can pick your friends, but you can't pick your family. Captain, if only you knew how right you were. <laughs> now, um... Oh, so you said you were here to better learn about your mission of mercy. Should we take this to a conference room, if you wouldn't mind? Of course, Captain. I will follow you where... I will go wherever you wish. Okay. Uh, Samalsberg, please take good care of the children. Meanwhile, we're going to go back to Ops, where... Uh, Mr. Dalrum, who is currently in command. I'm kind of pacing on high alert uh, mm. at the top railing here. Lieutenant Darval, just you hear a small sigh coming from him. Commander, there, uh, Commander, there is yet another vessel approaching us from the uh, from the eye of the nebula. It's a Vitar's care. It's a Vitar's carrier, sir. Two presents that we didn't want on this Christmas. We I are hit being my hailed. Combat. I hit my combat badge first. Captain, the Vitar's a uh, Vitar's uh, vessel just entered the nebula. They're hailing. They're hailing us. I'm going to attempt to stall. Of course, um. Do what you can, Commander. Will do. I'll be on my way. Uh, Darth Vol on screen, please. All right. So, with that, the holographic projection appears. Deep Space 15. This is Adrak Charmal. You are current. You are currently aiding and abetting some of Atar's traffickers known as the Draven. We request that you, or we order you to turn them over and return any Vitar citizens that may have been illegally transported to your station. Well, hello, hello Adrak. Uh, Merry Christmas. It is Charmal. Uh, Adrak is my rank. Similar to your Admiral, I believe, if, I'm, if I recall your Starfleet traditions. But Correct, yes. but when I'm addressing a person of a rank, I usually dr call them by their rank. So I would call my captain by captain, admiral by admiral. You introduced yourself as Adrak Charmal, so I addressed you as Adrak. This seems oddly logical. Very well. My apologies. Now, please, ret as we are cordial with... As our species has so far remained pr mostly cordial with one another... I reiterate that you pl return any uh, Vitars that may be on board your station as well as the criminals who have transported them here. Oh, we'll get to those lovely pre pleasantries here in a little bit. But first, I want to say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas? Is this a yes. greeting I'm unfamiliar with? Sort of. Uh, seeing as the Federation uh, is housed on Earth... Uh, the Federation has adapted a lot of human customs, and one of them is the uh, holiday of Christmas. Now, Christmas is a combination of many different holidays, all celebrated within the, like the 29 to 30 days that um, the month of December back on Earth is celebrated. Um, Christmas is one uh, following one of the main religions of Earth in the 20th and 21st centuries, um, as well as prior to that. Um, that adapted on a lot of different but um, it's celebrated by giving as uh, 
decorating as you can see we've decorated the station a little bit um but it's a time of gathering as well as sharing gifts um and getting to uh know one another that's a very impressive filibuster i must say and ju and as soon as you are finish your speech the captain comes through one of the turbo lifts i turn ah captain i was just a informing the adrak here about christmas and how the holiday has uh the history of the holiday and how we celebrate it currently i see um adrak it's good to see you again it's been a while it has and i hope that our relations will once again be cordial you are in possession of several vatar citizens who have been stolen from our imperium we request that you please return them and turn over the criminals who have stolen them. Um, my apologies if I'm being rude, but we seem to have some sort of contradiction. Um, the captain, the Draven vessel that just came here said that he brought these Vitars here to keep them safe. There is no safer place for the Vitars than the Imperium. Hmm. While they're busy talking, uh, Lieutenant Commander Keevan, uh, your engineering panel shows that the starboard side of the station sensor array just went dead. And yeah, at this that point, is a troubling situation. Um, at this point, we're going to start an extended task for you. That will figure out precisely what might be causing this. Um, so this is going to be a work track of 15, uh, difficulty of 3, magnitude of 2, and resistance of 2. And this is going to be... Uh, and so engi insight engineering, reason engineering... Uh, control engineering, anything like that to figure out what might be going on. And the station or one other individual may assist you with these roles. And I believe you might have a, if I recall right, you have some sort of talent that might help. I have a focus of troubleshooting. That might work, yeah. Troubleshooting is a good one. And then eventually onward, I will probably have maintenance specialist that will help me out with an extended task. I'll have to read up on that real Okay. Um, oh, <laughs> that was a... Oh, yes. Complication. Interesting. Alright. Uh, someone uh -huh. can assist. It's possible they'll crit. Mm, man, oh, man. Um... I think I'll have Nia assist. All right. So let's roll for Nia. Let's see here. I don't think he has a focus. No. So hope he crits. Okay. Yeah, that's one success. Not enough, I'm afraid. <clears throat> we do Would have. Would the station be assisting? Uh, no, not not in this instance. We do have enough momentum that we can buy off that complication. You could spend two momentum, sure. I think in... Hmm, yeah, I think in this case, I think it'd be worth it. But I'll leave it to our chief, chief engineer. I'm gonna have to agree. <laughs> okay. okay. So we're down to two <laughs> momentum. Yep. Uh, so, Keevan, as soon as you begin your troubleshooting, the uh, sensor rape returns to status perfectly fine as if nothing was wrong what is most interesting is that when you go through the like the logs the logs don't seem to show anything amiss as far as the logs are concerned the sensors were operating all the time without incident hmm I think we got something else going on in... anyways um, I tend to oh, agree yes lieutenant Hmm. Anyways, back to the uh, sh shouts and demands of an impatient Adrak. 
which is actually a hilarious word to say once you say it enough. <laughs> Edric. Captain, I am showing you a significant amount of leeway and patience with this situation. Had we ha had not any con connection, er, blah. had we not had any diplomatic in relations with your federation until now, I would have immediately ordered the entire or my entire fleet to this station and retrieve them by force if necessary. In fact, I have more uh, more ships en route at now as we speak. I am just giving you the opportunity to do the right thing for diplomatic uh, for the dipl ah, for the sake of diplomacy. And I appreciate that, but if I may, may we take time to may I take the time to talk this over with my executive officer you may do so my reinforcements will arrive within four hours captain I recommend that you have a the citizens ready for return up, 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 up before that time charm all out and with that he is out I just look at the captain I don't think they very well appreciated my history of Christmas. Um, sure didn't necessarily seem like it. Um, and at this point I'll tap my comm badge. Uh, Captain Crawford to Lieutenant Commander Demos. Yes, Captain? How have our visitors been acting? Particularly the two Draven folk. Um, upon overhearing that the Vitars are definitely in sector, the uh, Demos, you have noticed that um, Belthir is um, most agitated. Uh, his sister Zilla is just as nutty as a squirrel anyways, so her appearance hasn't changed. And the two adults, uh, Berg and Somalis, are concerned, but keeping it together for the sake of appearances. All things considered, as you expected. Hmm. Well, that'll be all for now. Thank you. Demos is making sure he's near the sister the most, just because of how she's acting. A wise idea. Um, a... Uh, could you do me an... Uh... Let's do a reason plus security, please. Uh, this will be a difficulty of two. Just to recall certain details from the uh, Nighthawk report from dealing with these people. Uh, investigation as a focus? That should work, yes. Woo. Yep. That's, that does it. Uh, so the uh, final report signed off by... Uh, the captain um, has uh, says that the ca uh, the captain Belthier is overly confident and smug when he has an upper hand, but when he doesn't have the upper hand, he becomes uh, reactionary and prone to flight. Um, the his three sisters, and he does mention three in parentheses clones question mark. Um, are extremely brilliant and have shown extreme aptitude in genetics, um, biological, and technological and cybernetic research. Um, in all honesty, he fears the cis, or he mentions that the female is the higher risk in most situations due to her unpredictability. Uh, he's just going to send out a message to Dura uh, and to the flight control uh, to lock down that ship. Clamp, like, just hard lock the mooring clamp so that ship can't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, increase security around that vessel. Understood. And uh, he is just going to keep getting in the way of the sister mm -hmm. because he's a big walking cybernetic thing. Yeah. So he wants to try and put her focus onto him so he can manage her. Alright. Uh, she will 
respond pr by at first being a, acting like a petulant child, um, and then immediately realize that you are entirely cybernetic, and she starts calling you Mr. Grumpy Robot Pants. And then begins to barrage, barrage you with questions all about your superstructure, materials, how does your brain work, you know. He'll answer with just enough to keep her asking. All right. Um, and sort of enough time has passed that if Mr. Keevan, could you please roll another test in your investigation? Yes, I definitely can. And just to verify, testing a theory... Oh, no, wait. Okay. Do, 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 do. Yep. Okay. Testing a theory... Which states, uh, when you attempt a task using engineering or science, you may roll one additional d20 as long as you succeeded at a previous task covering the same scientific or technological field earlier in the same adventure. So would that ah. qualify? Well, um, because I, we didn't succeed at yeah. the first task. Yeah, we... You haven't succeeded yet, so you'll have to succeed first, and then you can go from there. How oh, balls. Yeah, <laughs> so feel free to try yeah. rolling again. If Kevin wouldn't mind, Neil would actually like to take the lead on this. You know the station a little better, so I would be more than happy to help let you um, take the lead. Okay. Um, let's see here. So, uh, what could I use again, just for sake? Um, of... reason, science, or no, sorry, reason, engineering, uh, insight, science, control, engineering, really okay. those sorts of things. Um, I'm gonna go with control engineering here. Okay. Uh, I will... Yeah, um, I will use his value of any machine is my play thing here. Okay. And let me see if his symbiote can do anything with this. No. And then, yeah, I think that's all he can really do. He has uh, either computers or firewalls as a focus here, maybe? Mm, no, I wouldn't say it in this instance. Okay. So, control, engineering. 2D20, I've already got two. Okay, that's one success. So, Nia... Or, so, so that's uh, three, because I popped his determination. Ah, yes, right, determination, so three successes. That's enough to beat it. Uh, if um, Mr. Keevan can roll to assist, we'll see if we can get momentum out of the deal. Yep, and just to double check, the, um, I can apply my troubleshooting. Yep. Um, uh, okay, there, there we go. go. So that is one momentum. And yep. if you could please roll me seven challenge dice there, Nia. Okay. And you said there's resistance of two here? Resistance two, yes. Okay, so seven challenge dice. Okay. Oof. Um, I'm going to... Spend a momentum. Uh, spend a momentum for piercing. Okay. And a momentum to re-roll those zeros. Okay. So roll me five challenge dice. Hey, yes. that's much better. So, and I will say that whenever I activated him, I gave him the talent of miracle. Ha! Nice. Especially with those effects. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Okay. Definitely so I believe that's seven work. So, because miracle worker will actually give me two breakthroughs, correct? Does it? I'm. I'm sorry. I don't remember the talent offhand find it quickly I'm sure but yeah uh yeah I'll quickly. oh I'm actually on it right now it. okay cool there you go thank you um whenever you use engineering on an extended task if you achieve a breakthrough and roll at least one effect on a challenge die you achieve you achieve a second break ah interesting okay so uh to so this is going to reduce it 
down to a difficulty of one magnitude of zero left cool okay uh so nia as you were down there working with the rifles and yeah now uh, you're beginning to understand what might be going on here but you haven't figured it out precisely yet um something uh it appears that chroniton in uh chroniton radiation is somehow hampering or interfering or changing the power dynamics within the whole within the space at uh, within Cerberus station uh, causing blackouts um, brownouts or gravity loss I see uh, he'll tab his com badge um specialist neo to both lieutenant Deckard and ensign Ilya this is Ilya Deckard here um, I might require you both down here in engineering. We've got a problem that might be pertaining to the little study we did earlier. <sighs> Sorry, folks. I'm really going to have to keep an eye on this. Um, okay, so... Yeah, so Chroniton Energy is floating ab about the station and is um, causing problems with power with systems that it begins to interact with. And it's at this point that um, an hour has or an hour or so has passed. And uh, do you guys wish to do anything else other than, or are you going to continue to bang away at this problem? I would love to continue to bang away at this problem. Okay, so we're just going to quickly jump to the main page here just to show how threatening and ominous the situation could be. Thankfully, there are two somewhat decent uh, conditioned starships that could assist if necessary, but the main carrier, the Kova Mesh, is looming outside the station. It currently doesn't have any weapons charged, but its shields are definitely up. Gotcha. All right. <clears throat> so, you're saying that you wish to continue to explore this, correct? Sure. Uh, probably our best option. Yeah. All right. Let's go to the physics lab because we don't really have a main engineering in this station. Okay, so we have Keevan. We have Nia. Nope. Engineering is Nia. Anybody else wish to see what's going on? Now that you've unlocked this uh, far in the task, I will allow science personnel to assist if they wish. I believe we could probably have, what, both Ilya and Deckard here, since Nia called them down. They're both science personnel. They are indeed. Okay. Science. Deckard and Lack. Okay. Uh, who wishes to take the ro the reins next time? Or this time? I think Nia with Miracle Worker is still a better option to... Um, okay. But I will say Elia has Mental Repository. The character can take the time to focus during a task two intervals during a time task they reduce the difficulty of the task by one uh sorry repeat that for me so it says this character can take time to focus during a task two intervals during a time task they reduce the difficulty of the task by one on a success they gain a momentum which can be spent on the obtain information spend interesting okay um so i'm tracking intervals um the intervals are per hour uh, mm -hmm. So if you wish to take two hours, so it's currently three hours until the, uh, well, before the Vitaris do something. So mm -hmm. if you wish to spend two hmm. time, that will bring you to one hour left to go. I think during the kind of time crunch we have, mental repository is a good talent, but because Not of for the this. time crunch, we probably shouldn't be taking that time. 
Totally understandable. I just was throwing it out there that I have it. Oh, yeah, no, it's a good idea. But mm-hmm. given how vicious the Vitars might be, we probably shouldn't be wasting time. Okay. Okay, so Nia can go, and one person can assist, either with uh, engineering or science. I think Ilya would be a pretty good assist here, because yeah. chronological anomalies. That would be a good focus. Mm-hmm. Okay, so control engineering for him. What would Ilya be uh, assisting with? Probably what control science. I, uh, uh, control insight or reason science. Any of those would work well. We'll do control science. Okay, that is one degree success. Uh, let's see. Oh, I'm sorry. Because there was a breakthrough difficulty one, so you are still successful. Uh, so if Nia could roll me seven challenge dice, please. Right. <clears throat> okay. So, resistance. Uh, I will spend that last momentum to re-roll those three zeros. All right. See if we can get enough to finish up the work track. Hey. I believe that's enough. Yeah. Okay. So between Nia, Lakila, Keevan, and Deckard. Uh, Nia, you have you begin, to, or Nia and Kevin begin to understand more about th- how this chroniton radiation is interacting with these various systems on the station. Um, I should mention, as you are doing so, you are getting ooh. Oh no! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You guys are feeling the pressure quite literally as internal gravity is lost for the throughout the entire station for roughly five minutes, and the uh, systems that are keeping the station more or less stable within the gravimetric shears of the nebula uh, temporarily goes down, causing the station to whirl about like a spinning top bef- until everything sort of comes back up automatically. Uh, Sick Bay reports several injuries, but nothing fatal. Oh, that's good, at least. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's been your last hour. And La- as this happens, Lakila is finally able to pinpoint the uh, source of the chronometric radiation. Or not chronometric, the chron- chroniton radiation. And it appears that there are three different sources. Um, nothing larger than a baseball, which is why it's been so difficult to nail these things down. It's actually easier to track them based on the trail they leave instead of the, you know, balls themselves. But finally, with some assistance from Rami, they are able to be tracked. He calls Deckard over um, and shows you the pattern of movements. Lieutenant Decker, I believe that these are not moving on based on random any random pattern I am familiar with. Would would you agree? Hmm. What seems to be drawing the attention? Well, it would appear that they are primarily drawn to strong sources of power, such as the phaser arrays, which thankfully have not been powered. And there seems to be a couple that are drawn down to the uh, primary fusion reactors. And this one just seems to be bouncing around, almost as if it's exploring. As if it's exploring. You're making it sound like these are sentient. I was just thinking the same thing. At this point, uh, Lieutenant, I am not will. I'm not willing to... Um, discount such a possibility. Would I... Would Nia know about the... our visitors? Uh, was Nia there... Was Nia part of the assault team? I forget. That rescued the Enterprise E? No, I'm more talking about do I know about the two Draven individuals and the... Like, the... I know about the Void Nightmare being there, correct? 
Uh, I would suspect that news travels relatively quickly on this sort of space station, especially when shifty individuals come to town. Sure. And you said, let's see, two of them were near the fusion reactor. One of them was near the phaser arrays? That's based on their past trajectories. None right, none up there right now. Oh, gotcha. <clears throat> hmm. Well, you think our new visitors might have anything to do with it? It's a, it's a theory. <laughs> well, it's something we'll have to mull over. What would get rid of Chronoton? Is there a sweep we can do? Like, you know, they had the Baryon sweep? Yep. Uh, Lakila knows this. Uh, the Anion fields. Um, an Anion field would be perfect for getting rid of all sorts of negative or uh, chroniton particles, specifically those from uh, left by those who have been moving out of phase. And he pulls up... Uh, you would have this uh, record on file where, uh, let's see if the start date was mentioned, uh, star date 45892.4, where uh, one uh, Ensign Rolaren and Lieutenant Commander Jordy LaForge were thought yeah. dead, but instead were transported or moved slightly out of phase with the universe. Hmm. Then well, you think we should run a quick Anion sweep of the station, Ensign? I'd say let's do a full blast. We should Everyone. make sure that the energy uh, readings are not in a wall. Well, it seems like we don't have any weight, because the ones we saw are from the past and not currently, correct? Or, um, with the amount of success you were able to beat the work track by, you do have, uh, it's a ballpark within a couple square meters, but you have an idea where each one is. Okay. And none of them are currently within a wall. Not really. One of them just seems. One of them is currently in the power, is in the power systems. The other one, one of them is just. Let's say it's on deck thirty-two. And the third is slowly moving up the main turbo shaft. Well, it seems that none of them are in the wall currently. Um, it seems like an Anion Blast would be fine. I reiterate, a full-powered one. If these are individuals or entities hiding, they may not like being found, or they have ways to try to conceal them further. Mm -hmm. A full hit may render their technology inoperable. If these are individuals, security should be notified. I am in agreement. And looking at the one that's in the turbo shaft, can I draw a safe conclusion that it's heading towards ops? It is moving... It is sort of moving in a straight line, but ops does appear to be along its direct path. Okay. I'll notify Lieutenant Commander Demos. Um, the rest of you can should probably be preparing that full Anion blast, and I'll tap my comm badge really quick. Uh, Specialist Nia to Lucan eh, Lieutenant Commander Demos. Uh, Demos here. I hate to interrupt you again, but we seem to figure out something that's going on here at this station. We have... What appears to be four individuals that might be either out of phase or something of the sort, um, I'd suggest getting some extra security officers to these coordinates, and he'll give them, he will send Demos coordinates to where e each of those locations are. Understood, thank you. And he's going to relay this information to his 
security teams to get in position. Okay. Which actually, I think as a security officer, I get advantage on this stuff. You do indeed. Um. Uh, so this would. Uh, just because I haven't asked you to roll this sort of chest before, and because I find it cool, and you sort of have run out of momentum, uh, roll me a presence security, please. Difficulty of one. Intruder protocol applies? Yeah, I'd say that works quite perfectly, actually. Yeah. Hey. Well, there's there two go. more momentum for you. Yeah. Security and responds with the efficiency of one that is ready, willing, and able. I'll head to the closest sign, but on the way, I'm going to. Uh, I'm just imagining where we are on the station right now. I I suspect you're probably still in ops. Uh, I was with the. Um, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. So you're probably on the boulevard, which would be close to the main security office. I, I'm going to take him to security, the uh, the group. Okay. And I'm just going to sit them into the training room and tell them, like, sit here, stay here, don't touch anything, feel free to spar, sit. And then he's going to leave. <laughs> feel as, free to spar and sit. As you leave, um, Zilla just turns to... Um, uh, uh, Barthi Ellen just says, Do you think they'll let us take apart their weapons? I really want to see how they work. That was not the none time. In, none in this room. And he's going to look at three security officers. Keep an eye on them. They nod in synchronicity. And he's going to head to the nearest sign. Alright, that's Which... probably on the boulevard. Alright, Berg and Samar, Samalis are keeping an eye on the children, so they're around somewhere. Captain, where are you in all this, I should ask? Um... Assuming that Demos would have relayed this information to the captain. Um. God, I'm trying to remember these Draven names so bad. Is, yeah. What was the name of the male one? Uh, Balthier. Balthier. Um. Balthier, if you'll excuse me for just a moment, there are some. Seems like some fairly high priority matters I'll attend to. I'll be. Glad to speak with you about your mission of mercy shortly. And he will probably, assuming that, would Deimos be going to ops, Deimos? I believe he was going to the closest one, which would probably be around the boulevard. Okay. Um, he would, he'll stick with Deimos. All right. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Demos, uh, you leave the security office just to meet up with... Uh, just to be met up by the captain. Gonna look at him for a second like, um... Uh, hi. Well, judging from the conversation I just heard with Nia, I figured I should probably help in handling this matter to some extent. Man, it's your prerogative, but typically our captain is supposed to stay in the command post. I mean, uh, I guess in, <laughs> in all cases, I should probably head to ops then, or... Your captain, do what you want. Uh, yeah, he'll assume that Demos has things locked down here on the boulevard, and he'll go to Ops. Okay. Okay, Captain goes back to Ops. Uh, Captain, you reach Ops just about the time that uh, Engineering is ready to run this Anion burst. And not a moment too soon... Because what's going to happen this time? Oops. Oh boy. Oh boy, that's an interesting combination. Uh, that's been three hits destruction now. Yeah. 
the the they're not tech, they're not really breaches. I'm just rolling to see what the what random effect these guys are doing, or what this th effect is taking care of. The uh, just as you reach the top, uh, or just as you reach the uh, deck one of the turbo lift, there's a power s failure. And Captain, I'd like you to please roll me a daring plus uh, secure. No, roll me a fitness plus security test, please. Difficulty of two. Interesting. Okay. That's not terrible. Uh, he has no focuses or any values that could apply, so we're just gonna... Roll the dice and see where they land. Yeah, I'll end up spending a momentum to buy a third, though. Okay. Oof. Good, uh, good, good, good. You good. could spend your determination to re-roll the zeros, if you want. Yeah, but I don't necessarily think I have any... Does it need to be a value it that applies in order to do It does need to be a that? value, yes. I don't really think I have All right. any that would apply here, so... All right. Oh, good. Oh, <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. Uh, so just as you reach the top, there is a power failure on the station, and the turbolift drops five decks um, before the system or before auxiliary power kicks in and brings it to a screeching halt, uh, you will take seven points of stress, which I believe will leave you with an injury. Yeah. Um... Yeah. Uh, so I, I would think that the fall and then the sudden uh, ceasing of the fall will cause you to shatter some ribs. Probably. And this isn't a lethal injury, no. correct? This okay. is not lethal. If this was combat, you'd just be taken out of combat. Okay. But good, it's, you, good, good. it's you fighting a turbo lift, so, you know. Right. On, I'm just marking down. You were zero G and then wham! Pretty yeah. much. Okay. Mm. Ow. <laughs> um, okay. Meanwhile, up of... on the bridge, Dolrum is trying to troubleshoot <laughs> yes uh Dolrum, while there while this is going on uh we're just cut right back to the main page where four more uh vessels have entered the system and have formed up behind the uh, uh flagship the kova mesh have our communications been affected not since the jingle bells incident so I'm going to uh, send a hail, uh, just without a res response, just stating that the station is experiencing uh, cascading technical difficulties um, and will respond shortly. Fair enough. You naturally do not get a response from this. Okay, um, deploying the Anion Sweep is going to be a... Uh, let's run this as a control plus engineering. And the sh uh, station can assist with structure engineering in this instance. And because of the system hit to structure, I'm going to increase the cha the um, complication range uh, 17 to 20. Oh, and this boy. is going to be a difficulty 3. I have the station dialed up and waiting for you to hit submit. Who's hit and go? I think this would probably be Keevan. Yeah, that... You know, if someone's going to put the station in jeopardy, it may as well be the chief engineer. I love yeah. your guys' confidence in me, thanks. <laughs> do, do you have a value that apply here? Because determination sounds good for this task. Mutual cooperation is the key to success. That's vague enough, I'd allow it. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I'm going to go along with the immediate cri uh, the immediate critical success. Okay. So spend... Always a waste. Yeah, so you'll just 
get a third dice that rolls a one. So cool. And I don't think I have a focus to go along with this one. Well, that's you got the one success. You, uh, so you bought the third dice, so you don't need to roll three. Oh, oh yeah. So that's going to nix the third dice, which would have been a zero anyways. You that... couldn't have nixed. <clears throat> ha! Station pulls through. Okay, nice. So that's uh, <laughs> nice. two more momentum on top of that all. So we need to buy off the complication yeah. that Kevin got with the second dice because it rolled no, a 19. You don't need to. <laughs> but we we kind of do in this I, case. I would prefer not to have the wrong thing go happening. Although we did technically succeed. Yeah, let's just immediately spend that two momentum we got okay. to buy off that complication. Okay, no complication. Just success. So we're going to cut back to the boulevard where Demos and a couple security officers are waiting for something to happen. Um, this The station bathes itself in a sort of a tingly blue, blue light that passes from deck one all the way down to deck 200. And as it passes through the boulevard, um, this sort of sparkling thing appears in front of Demos. Maybe not right in front, but, you know, close enough. It is a miasma of blinking lights uh, encased in a gassy hue. With special effects straight out of the TOS era, really, but <laughs> it is what it is. What it, is. Um, it is visible for roughly five seconds, um, before it disperses completely. Trying to demo to Nia. This is Specialist Nia. Go ahead, Lieutenant Commander. Do the burst again, but so keep it sustained. Keep uh, medical on standby as well for anyone getting sick. All right. Well, Lieutenant Commander Keevan, you heard him. All right. Uh, the burst uh, occurs again. Uh, this time, Demos, you don't see anything. And Lakila, who is watching the sensors like a hawk, reports that the three entities uh, seem to cease to exist. They no longer appear on his sensors. Hmm. What's happening? I'm not seeing it again. Um, Lieutenant Commander, they appear to be gone. That's not good. Uh, discontinue the beam, then. Did we destroy them by accident? Um, we very well could have. Fantastic. Get him a report, and I'll let the captain know. Demos to Captain Crawford. He responds, and you hear him sort of pain. Go ahead, Lieutenant Commander. Are you okay? Yes, I was in the turbo lift when it stopped and decided to drop about five decks, and now I've got a... Uh, feels like a few busted ribs. Roger that. On my way. And, uh... All right. Devos to Chief Medical Officer Aria. Aria here. Go ahead, Chief. Captain has a bit of a bruise. Let's go check him out, please. He's in the turbo lift, and I'll give her the exact location. Why are humans so soft and prone to injury? I know, why can't they be made of metal? Or chitin. That too. Or scales. That too. <laughs> ah, so long story short, we are now going to be in sick bay with the captain being patched up. Uh, where is it? Infirmary. Ooh, it's been a while since we've been in here. There we go. <clears throat> All right, Captain's over here. Area's over here. 
and Demos is watching out. <laughs> so, Captain, you are brought into sta you are stabilized. Arya just says, "You'll be fine. Just don't sleep on your side." Yep. Avoid strenuous movements for the next few days, but if uh, Chief Ember's reports were anything to say of, um, you don't have to worry too much about avoiding physical or extreme physical activity because that doesn't seem to be on your daily regimen, anyways. Thank you, Commander. <clears throat> she smiles, just uh, doing my job. Uh. Demos, what seemed to be our issue? Oh, we encountered some weird wisp. But it looks like whatever we blasted with either scared it off or killed it. I'm hoping the former, but we don't know how delicate those things were. I see. Um, I hope it's the former as well. And he'll kind of tap his comm badge. Uh, Captain Crawford to Commander Dolrum. This is Dolrum. Any ideas about what we're going to do about our guests? Referring to both the ones inside and outside of the station. That is a good question because you have roughly an hour to go. Well... Technically, the station is Federation soil. They are actively being sought by another government. We could grant them asylum. Or send them on their way and hope that they can outrun them. That's about the only options I'm seeing, other than possibly sitting down and getting both parties to talk, but... That seems like a very hard option to believe. Well, in There's any of the situations, alliances are going to be very stretched thin here. If we send them on their merry way, then we lose uh, the planetary support of our friends that are already on the station. If we grant them asylum, we lose our friends outside the station support. Sitting down and talking has the possibility of keeping both of them as allies or completely destroying all alliances altogether. Hmm. I'd like to try and resolve this as peacefully as I can, but we have them sit down and talk. We have to find some way that they don't start a war on the station. I would have to concur. Have any Christmas spirit there, Captain? Oh, I'm just getting patched up in sickbay after busting a few ribs. No, I was thinking about solving the problem with a little bit of Christmas spirit. It's Christmas Day, after all. We could have a little Christmas dinner. Well, something I haven't tried before we might as well try the option that might seem the weirdest um <laughs> captain crawford to lieutenant darval darval here captain uh patch me through to the batar ship if you can yes captain shall i route visual to sick bay uh of course understood sir And with that, Adrak Tramal appears on a small uh, monitor by the captain's bio bed. Captain Crawford, your time is almost up. Have you made a decision? I believe I have, Adrak. Um, this might seem like a bit ludicrous of an option to you, but we would like to have both yourself and the draven individual that's on board the ship. Balthier. Uh, we'd like 
Yep, Balthier. Uh, to meet together for dinner, if that would be okay with you. There is a long, awkward pause. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is not common for us to dine with those we are, who we declare our enemies, Captain. Is this a strange I, human cu or a strange Federation custom that we are unaware of? I understand that it seems awkward, but uh, it is roll, um, Christmas roll. Day after all, and we'd like to try and resolve this as non-violently as we can. All right, uh, roll me presence plus command, please. Yeah, and uh, this is going to be an opposed test. So okay. Whoever has the most successes wins, and I believe, in case of a tie, goes to the defender. Um, diplomacy as a focus would apply here, correct? Uh, diplomacy as a focus would definitely apply. Uh, and he, would, th he has one success. Okay. Um, let's try and generate some momentum here. I'm going to pop my point of determination with the value violence as a last resort. That's a very good uh, determination, or a very good value. And yes, I have a focus. Oof, good thing you had wow. took that determination. Wow. Apparently. Okay. <laughs> so I get nineteen right. and eighteen. Jeez. Okay. Well, that's so at least. Do I get a determination because of the difference, or you get a momentum? Not determination, momentum. You get, my bad. You get one momentum. Yes. Cool. You... Very well, Captain. I shall. I await you transport to this location. To this dinner of yours. Very well. We'll see you soon, Adrak. Captain. And he signs out. Um, I, oh, sorry, I calm down ahead. to the captain. Captain, what was the response? Um, apparently that idea worked, Commander. Alright, I'll alert Apatu. We'll get the conference room set up for a full Christmas ball. Of course. <laughs> um, and if he can, he will come to the uh, to that training room that Demos left our guest in. Alright. Uh, this is Dura. Um, Crewman Dura, if you can, um, please get uh, Captain... I guess I'll call him Captain Balthier for now. He is requested up in the conference room. Yes, sir. I shall, I shall escort him up there myself. Of course. And uh, what about his sister? He'll kind of look to Demos. I'll keep her busy. Um. All right. Um. Go ahead and bring her up. We'll have Demos there as Overwatch. Understood, Captain. Okay, so who wants to attend one of the most awkward Christmas dinners since um, <laughs> the since uh, Grandpa stopped drinking whiskey? <laughs> <laughs> I will because I. This will probably be about the same as when my uncle stopped drinking Romulan ale. <laughs> That sounds good, okay. Uh, let's see. So, we have the captain there, obviously. We have Mr. Daldrum. We have Keevan. And, of course, we can't have a party without Demos the Slayer. <laughs> oh, Demos was going to take the sister to the bar. Ah, okay. So oh, okay. he's going interpretation to... on my end. My apologies. Okay. All right, they're going to the bar. Um, her anybody... or her sisters, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you only know of the one. Only one has shown herself today. <coughs> uh, does anybody else wish to bring a supporting character for any of this? <laughs> uh, I'll take Rainer. Okay, Rainer. Uh, that would be... I yeah, think I'd... this is... Is this the first time we've met Rainer, or is this... Does he Second get an activation third. now? Uh, I think it's the second time, so yeah, he does get an activation. Cool. Okay, we are going to cut over 
to the conference lounge, which is already using its second feature, which is a large banquet table. Ooh. I'm just imagining a gigantic Christmas tree in the middle of the room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a fair thing to imagine. So as he's eating a large drumstick, he's uh, Adrak Tramal is just sort of staring down most of you, especially um, Balthier. He's not. He seems not to be in a mood to talk right now. Balthier, on the other hand, is quite happily eating what might be mashed potatoes. I take it we're all in our diplomacy outfits. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just sit across, or sitting across the table, I'll look at the uh, Charmal and just go, Charmal, relax a little bit. Eat some food. The whole point of Christmas is to spend it together, friend or foe, as well as enjoy our time, exchange gifts, eat some food. There's even a very, very old uh, tale from Earth uh, from World War One, where on Christmas Day, fighting from both sides stopped and what was called No Man's Land, the area where bombs and uh, bullets were flying in between, uh, was even calm enough for the soldiers on both sides to come together, exchange small gifts, uh, sing songs, um, and eat what little food that they had together. You seem to know an awful lot about human tradition for an individual that I don't believe is human. Unless you you have a ugly or different mutation that I'm not aware of. I am a species known as the Zindi, but knowing humans for as long as I have, being in Starfleet as long as I have, as well as visiting Earth and enjoying history in general, you come across some of these very old traditions and uh, knowledge over the years. I also uh, have adopted three humans. Well, a human and then two uh, twins that are Beta Z, but they, Beta Z has their own customs as well. So my partner and I have done our best to do research and uh, be able to teach our children all the different customs from different planets. So at this point, I would like uh, Captain Crawford to roll mm -hmm. me a uh, presence plus command test, please. Okay. Uh, this will be a diff... Actually, let's turn this whole banquet thing into a work... No, how do I want to play this? No, let's just keep this as different checks. Because a work track usually assumes one particular outcome where this could go any number of ways. Ah, uh, yeah, so Presence plus Command, um, Dalrum or someone else can assist. Uh, this will be a difficulty of three. Um, this might sound a bit odd, but considering that Dolrum, what's Dolrum's Presence plus Command, out of curiosity? Yeah, I'd be shooting for a 13 with a Composure Focus. Okay. My Command is four, so my Command is high, it's my Presence, that's nine. Right. Okay. But I also still have my determination to pop. Um, considering that Dorm has been doing most of the talking during the scene so far, I think I would actually like him to take the lead. Okay. Works for me. And I will assist him, and since I have the advisor talent, he can reroll one of his D20s. Ooh. Nice trick. Yeah. I was going to say, I was tempted to pop my determination because I have a species among many considering we're teaching them different customs mm -hmm. that value I think comes into play but if uh, with advisor I'm going to hold off using my determination right now All right. however I think buying a third die would be a good choice okay I'll go ahead and roll my assist real quick here diplomacy is a focus yes indeed Composure as a focus? That'll work. 
You have an assist from me. Okay, so that is... And you is... give me a re-roll. Three successes. So we do have those three successes that we need. Yeah. So in the case that that zero might be a complication, I would probably hold off, but I'll let you do what you want. Well, it's currently an 18. Right. Yeah, and I did not spend thread at the start of the roll, so I can't... Oh, oh never mind. <laughs> okay, so five successes. So that's two momentum. <laughs> Commander, yeah. Um, history of Earth is quite illuminating. Our species has been uh, a unified faction for as long as any of us can remember. Uh, we began, and our earliest memories are, or at least the earliest recorded memories, are those of a fledgling Imperium beginning to spread amongst the stars. We have encountered and... I am not proud to say, eliminated several uh, violent species along the way until, well, you know all about the Borg. And we, we're just interested in rebuilding our society. And with the society, we can't move a society forward without children. I and, can completely understand that, uh, Tramal. Um, uh, but is taking children away from their families the best option for them? Yes, Which that's a very good question, Commander. As speaks the female uh, voice behind you as a Somalis uh, struck, walks into the room uh, and sits down between uh, Ensign Rayner and Balthier Voidrunner. Uh, she, without asking, she reaches for the vegetables of the day and begins eating them and stares uh, at uh, Charmal with an icy glare. Charmal, I would like to bring up one thing that a lot of Earth countries before we had a united Earth did. Um, it's called conscription, where they would have um, the children you know, raised on their home worlds by their families uh, until or in this case on in their villages raised by their families until they turned of legal age which for humans I turned to Crawford with, uh, was 18 at the time and at that point they would conscript them into the armed forces where they would choose their the armed force that they wanted to serve in because we had multiple at the time um and they would serve a certain number of years, learn how to fight, but also learn a trade. So after their certain time period would be up, they could go back and return to their villages or go wherever. Uh, I think that would be something worth thinking of instead of taking the children at such a young age um, from the various planets. <laughs> taking them from the various planets at a young age, you're dooming the planets to die. Um, do any of you have a focus in people reading, or... You're cutting out, McCall. Uh, sorry, how's this? Better? Yes. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, do any of you have experience or focuses in people reading, or are hiding being an empath or telepath? Oh, let me look at not at all. Mm. Nah. nah. Alright. I do have a value. No secret is truly a secret. Have you popped your determination yet? Fortunately, yes. <laughs> Alright. Well darn. Okay. <clears throat> Although I do have culture. I mean, if there's going to be some kind of opposed role, I do have cultural flexibility that'll help me reduce any kind of difficulty. That might come into play. Um, oh, yay, species talent. It is. Commander Dalrum, Miss Samalas, the methods that, the, the reasoning that we, or the methods by which we are, for la let's lay our cards on the table, abducting, let's call it that, abducting the children and bringing them back to 
are the home world is not for harm we do not intend the children harm we just require we but they're they are needed for a matter of national security and I'm afraid I cannot speak any further beyond that now if Miss Somalis and her partner wish to attend these children and I will give you my solemn world word as an adrak that no harm will come to their chip no harm will come to them I look down the table to Somalis I think they were more worried about the safety of the children but also the lifeline lifeblood of their colony without children to inherit or to help in the fields their colony will eventually die quite the op ah but they're once again part of the vitaris imperium where thanks to our uh resequencing or our, our um res ah to, to the eternal ah to the eternity to the eternity research group we can there are several thousand po members of our population who would yearn for a new experience on an, on an untamed world. It's and very easy to send uh, a new batch of workers out to a colony. Yes, the culture may change, but that was always going to happen. At least this way they will learn the proper Vitars imperial way instead of whatever lies this man has been feeding them. Uh, the Captain Balthier here uh, was just is assisting what the colony had asked him to do. Um. <laughs> had the colony, instead of fearing us, simply made proper inquir inquiries up the proper uh, diploma, up the proper chains of communication, we would not be in this mess. However, I will admit that Miss Somalis's previous fears, based on the Void Runners' trafficking or prior efforts in trafficking, and and their whatever abominations they were doing in their lab before we bombed that to oblivion. Yes. I can see why she would not choose to work with us, but at the same time, as the representative of the Vitars Imperium out here, I am required to fulfill its mandate. I think, you know, sitting down and opening communications on this Christmas is a good way to get rid of these misconceptions. Um, the colony, although now part of the Imperium, was adrift, for lack of a better way of putting it, for so long, it's going to take some time to reacclimate them. Quite possibly. And, and looking at the way that everybody was reacting uh, the colony was reacting out of fear due to prior experiences it might take a longer time of reintegration before we can start taking all the children it just when there's been so much time it takes even more time to bring everybody back together when you are apart uh, it's kind of how species evolve. Over time, you start as the same species, but when you are in a different environment, even though you might start as the same, you might break off into different species or have different adaptations for the livelihood in there. And although it's possible to bring them back together, it just takes time. 
What an... Yes. The Imperium sadly doesn't have the time it wishes that it did. Uh, he uh, quickly taps on his uh, wrist-mounted communicator. Charmal to Kovamesh. We are making progress. Do not fire for... Or do not fire for one more hour. Give us that mo Give us one more hour, then commence station bombardment if you do not hear from me. I just uh, sighed I Crawford. <laughs> sorry. Uh, he paused. Sorry, Captain, your time was almost up and my ship was about to fire. But we now appear to be making progress. <laughs> now, what I... My conversations with... Mr. Balthier, he said he was brought these people here as part of a way to help on his mission of mercy. Mr. Balthier, if you could explain that in a little more detail. Well, yes, Captain. As he he um he uh, speaks through um bites he takes out of a large slab of ham. Well, you see, Captain. We are nothing if not survivors. And the Borg had left ver us very little to survive on, so we had to improvise. Now, the un these untamed lands are becoming tamed, and I'm met with two choices. One, continue as I am with the with uh, borders that are growing ever closer and ever wider. Or learn to play. Learn to play by a new set of rules. Thankfully, your federation has provided me with a good set of rules, and one of them was answer distress signals. Thank Miss Samalas and the planet Krillia was just so happened to be a perfect test. So, as a mission of mercy, I snuck in. By the way, you really... By the way, Adrak, your security channels and encryption are so horribly out of date. Uh, took aboard as many children as I could. And then I figured if anyone knows what to do with a bunch of ragtag children, it would be you, Captain Crawford. And he shrugs. That was my mission of mercy. Well, <coughs> heard things to make decisions about. Adrak, would you, in what Commander Dorum has said to you, I know that you might view the Draven as. I believe you referred to them as criminals in our conversation, correct? Yes. And there are also far worse crimes than that. Um, for example, attempting to uh, purloin and uh, steal and manipulate and continue to operate Vitar's cloning technology without proper safeguards. That's right up there. Uh, kidnapping Vitar citizens. Um, if your logs on the ish on the matter were full and proper, Captain, that also includes murder of several Vitar citizens. And these, as these ones were not properly backed up with the Eternity Research Group, uh, their minds are completely gone forever. That's it, one of the greatest crimes of all. Of course, and. Now, Thier, would you be willing to possibly work in coordination with the Vitars as part of this mission of mercy you find yourself on to help establish diplomatic relations rather than ones of kidnapping their people? It doesn't take an empath to realize that Balthier is now trying to find a way to get his ass out of here. A captain, I'm not one for these large diplomatic um, 
endeavors. As you can see, I have enough trouble keeping my sister in line, let alone an entire Imperium. Uh, Captain... Uh, Cap... Adrek Jamal, we... why don't we just agree that I, we never see each... We never see each other again, and call it square. You can have your kids back, I, I swear, and, you know, I'll give you the coordinates to any of my others, my sister's, uh, previous experiment sites that you might not know about. Yes, that's a, I would call that a very good, um, uh, trade. Charmal's eyes just narrow. Well, yes, I, I think that's a good deal, and I'm glad that we've come to it. Um, and he'll tap a, a communicator that's hiding in one of his ears. Ah, Zilla, we're done here, dear. Um, let's meet back at the ship, and he gets up to leave. Uh, out of character, it's like, I feel like we should stop him, but... <laughs> Yeah, I'm debating stopping him or not. Well, you you have roughly 25 seconds before he makes it to the door. Yeah. I'll turn around. Balthier, it's very rude to leave the table while everyone is still eating. Well, C Commander Dalrum, you have been such a gracious host, and I would hate to, you know, eat and run, but you have to understand that we are very busy. I'm sure there's other people out there that need our help, and... This new, and then he just sort of, he'll realize that things might not be going his way. Fine, and he'll <laughs> slink back to the table, sit down, and presume to and uh, continue to eat the pumpkin pie that has been brought out. I turn back to the table. I think it's a good idea for us all to come to. A mutual agreement of assistance. We all share the space around the nebula in in the surrounding sectors. Uh, I think it's good for us all to come together to um, discuss our alliances as they come for they go forward. Adrak um, leans forward in his chair. Uh, pushing aside a plate of half-eaten uh, vegetables. The Vitaris Imperium is willing to ignore the crimes that of the Void Runner and the Void Nightmare performed as they were technically not in recognized Vitaris territory during the time of the experiments. However, we... The Vitaris Imperium will allow the Void Runner, t or will will allow the Void Nightmare to roam free, as long as there is a working transponder on that ship that the Vitaris can track, while the Void Nightmare is uh, and any uh, auxiliary craft are operating within Vitaris territory. Would this? be something you could agree to, Balthier. Yes, Captain. I, I am perfectly willing to accept this uh, because I suddenly don't think that the Vitars are the right people for us to assist on our mission of mercy. Maybe the Kasala or maybe the Nalu. One of those other burgeoning races that might need help rebuilding. Yes. Um, also, now that the moat has come down, the Scorpi, perhaps. Um, Anyway, a place far away from the uh, Vitaris territory would be a good place for me to be. Yes, I'm in full agreement to this. And Somalis, what of the children that are on board the station? You think in time you could <coughs> allow them to go with the Andrak if you were to give his word on the fact that they would not be harmed. Captain, despite my recent actions, I do consider myself to be a loyal Vitars citizen. And the children do as well. I am willing to admit 
that I acted out of fear and I wanted to protect those that I had seen grow from nothing to what they are now if the Adrak wishes to give his permission or gives his word that they will not be harmed I will take him at that because if there's anything to be said about the Vatars Imperium it is that they are honorable and keep their word and in your act Samalis I think you acted not out of fear but I would almost call it maternal instincts are you a parent by chance the uh, colored um, parts of the skin above her uh, eyebrows turn red yes captain I found out uh, two weeks ago then I believe that you acted as any mother would I think you're right captain I think I think that would be a a fair assessment. Commander, uh, she stands, um, uh, places one hand ac- across her chest in a salute. Andrek Charmal, I place myself, Berg, and the children under my care in the custody of the Imperial uh, military. However, please let us stay here for the night, as the children are quite captivated by the celebrations. <laughs> uh, Dolron will smile. I am sure, looking at the captain, that I can say for both of us that anybody who would like to come aboard for the festivities are welcome. Adrak, Tarmal, you and... Well, the people of all the ships you've brought here are more than welcome to come celebrate as well I shall extend the invitation <laughs> one one moment captain and once again he taps his wrist this is Charmal power down weapons and cease plans and cease bombardment plans the situation has been resolved details will follow He will pick up a napkin rather clumsily and will mop his mouth off, and then he will stand up. This has been a most interesting custom, Captain. Captains. However, if you... I must, and I admit that this is probably rude. However, I have a rather lengthy report to file to the Imperator and my command. If I am to make it back for any of this celebration, I must start immediately. Of course. Please. Thank you for joining us, Adrak. Surprisingly, the pleasure is mine. I was not expecting this at all. Good day. (laughs) And with that, he will head out. (coughs) And I feel like at this point... Crawford would actually want to want to pull Balthier aside. I'm not surprised. Yeah. Okay, are you going to pull him aside here, or are you going to gra- drag him by his pointy ears to your ready room? <laughs> um, I'm just gonna like ask him to talk to me and like, um, actually, let like let's sit down like across from each other like here, or over by the benches over here no just where yeah like where do you move the tokens okay to. cool as as he sits down and he goes well captain i think that went rather well don't you think honestly i can say that it went a lot better than i thought it was going to commander dorum actually was the one who gave the idea hmm Yes, I will be sure to thank him. Now, I understand that you wanted to try and change your ways with this mission of mercy, but there are certain ways that you could have gone about it. Well, I suppose I could have, you know, let 
you know about it, and then, you know, I would have been free and not put my myself or my crew at risk, but I'm, I'm trying here, Captain. I really, really am. You see him just kind of, like, softly smile, and, well, if you would allow me, and I'm sure the commander and some of the other senior staff would agree, you have the makings of what could be a fine officer, if I may be so bold. He beams a bit, and some of it might actually be genuine. This um pleases me, Captain. If you wouldn't mind staying here on the station a while longer, we'd love to give you some of the some of the more proper protocol and diplomatic training, if you would want it. He, he stands up and brushes his coats. I appreciate that, Captain, but with your all respect that's how the Federation would... That's how you, Starfleet, and your Federation does things. I'm still learning who and what I am. And I'd rather not have anything forced upon me. After all, that's what that's what we Draven do. If something is forced upon us, we just push back. I'd rather find out my own course. Well, I can certainly understand that, but... At least, if you would stay a few days and you can learn what you wish, I will. I'll make sure that all of my officers here remain as unbiased and allow you to take whatever course you would like as they can. I will. I offer no promises, Captain. However, it will be nice to sleep in a. In quarters that are a little more comfortable than what I'm used to. Of course. And from what I remember, have we done anything with the uh, Breen Embassy yet? Uh, the Breen Embassy? No, that is still basically empty territory. Um, Let's have that made into not necessarily another embassy, but just somewhat nice quarters if we can for the uh, for our new Draven friends to stay in very well uh, I should mention that the station does come equipped with VIP quarters I see so um, they, they could work there too unless you okay, want but, them to cut keep coming back in which case that's going to be a whole new plot arc that I would look forward to doing um because what wait were all of the Typhon packed species embassies like taken off of the station um on, only the they were for a little while uh the breen embassy went away because well michael jensen was taken away uh the Can romulans you? lost their embassy status but were still allowed on the station because they were at least nice people um okay. however they have since renounced uh the romulans alliance has renounced their um Typhon Pact uh, state status, and okay. they were once a, once again allowed to have an embassy. So right now it's just the Klingons and the Romulans that have embassies, and the Ferengi. Gotcha. Although the Ferengi are rarely around because they're too busy selling to um, and uh, talking to all the new civilizations you meet. Gotcha. Um, judging from what we've seen here today, um, I'll put out a message to. Admiral Zier, and I'm sure what will be like our good Adrak, a very lengthy report uh, requesting to turn the empty emphasis space and maybe think about uh, moving space for another room to make an embassy for both the Draven and the Vatars. Ooh, an interesting idea. Okay. Yeah. That would... I will let you know how that goes, maybe next session. Yeah, I was suggesting... I was going to suggest making an embassy for the Vitars for sure. Yeah. Very well. Okay. Um, so we're going to have a closing scene just in the boulevard where the evening has come and everyone is on the boulevard 
celebrating a happy Christmas. So if anybody has anything they'd like to say to each other, now would be the time. Everybody's going to get a uh, like a traditional cheesy photo Christmas card from Dolrum and his family. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Uh, um, would I guess my question to Demos would would Demos still be on the boulevard, or would he be somewhere know. else? He's off shift. He's still uh he's off shift at the bar, uh, just talking with the sister. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, he's gone for more or less tra- going from you know just giving her things to talk about, but actually explaining about you know uh, everything with the exos and the tech as best as he can without giving her too many big ideas. <laughs> right. Okay. Um. I believe that uh, Crawford would probably be actually just kind of it doesn't necessarily be have to be a scene but just kind of walking and talking with uh, Balfier talking about certain basically like diplomatic uh, like proceedings and all that kind of jazz okay um Balthier would be more than happy to tell you about all the things he's done once the Statute of Limitations has run out. Of course. (laughs) Which, in some civilizations, might be never. (laughs) Uh, He does go on to give you a bit more about the Draven uh, history, though, and it appears that they are quite... uh, The Voidrunner uh, clan has naturally run uh, quite a ways away from their homeworld. Mm-hmm. Um, when asked where their homeworld is, he just sort of gestures and in, in some direction goes that way for several years. Hmm. Was there a specific reason that you ran as far as you did? Well, if you believe it, why? And then he counts down his fingers. My sixth generation's grandfather was married to the Grand Matriarchy and there was a nasty split and apparently he kept half of his assets and she kept half of hers and so I'm the half he I'm a proud descendant of the half of the assets that he kept I see none of us really have any desire to go back that way captain not when there's far more interesting things out this way. <laughs> and apparently, if I keep going in this general direction, I'll eventually reach these Klingons and Romulans and the Federation. And I'm quite interested to hear what these Orions are like. They sound like very interesting individuals. Indeed they are, Balthier. Uh, let's see. Um, Keevan, are you up to... So, since the um, Anion burst, uh, the station has been functioning well within uh, standard um, s- ah, standard specifications. There has been no more glitches, uh, no more kerfuffles, and no more falling turbo lifts. Well, it took long enough for me to get that working. <laughs> you know, just in the nick of time, just like everything else. But, hey, you did it. Hey, I had help. Indeed. And the scene shall close with everyone who is currently willing, joining hands around the Christmas tree and singing Oh Christmas Tree. (laughs) And on that... Sorry? I said a great way to end on a Christmas episode. (laughs) Indeed. So I that will bring the session to a close. I'd like to thank all my players for playing. I'd like to thank anyone watching for watching. And uh, just because we've missed so many episodes, um, we will be next week, Friday, uh, December the 6th, and then again on the thir- uh, the next Friday after that, the 13th. So I will see you guys then. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Later.